safe space. What's going on, Dale? Okay, Harris. How are? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Do I sound alright? Because I don't think my external mic is working, but it's going through my computer. If that sounds all right. I mean, it sounds it sounds fine. If you want to okay. set up the external mic, that's fine. Yeah, no, no. It's it. for some reason this this external mic just sometimes. I don't know why, but like it's been plugged in, but sometimes it just doesn't register. But if this sounds fine, then then that's okay. We'll make it work. Here we go. <clears throat> Thank you. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Black Guy Who Tells Podcast. I'm your host, Rod. Join us always by my co-host, Karen. And we are live for another episode of the podcast. You can find us everywhere you find podcasts. Uh, last day of the year. You know, we're trying to step in at 2024. Um, of course, uh, you know, the official weapon of the show is Bone Chair. And the unofficial <laughs> sport. Bullet ball. And bullet ball extreme. I told you no matter how fast or slow you said, I got to think about it. I, I know, <laughs> but if I I just know if I said it the regular way, you'll I'll, you'll miss it. I so sure will. I'm just trying to help you. Um, and you know, it's a special episode closing out the year. Mm -hmm. We got a special guest, uh, long suffering stand up comedian, <laughs> uh, host of uh, multiple podcasts, making podcasts great again. Uh, Rain on your parade. Uh, he has his own Patreon bonus podcast. You can find him doing cameos, doing all kinds of impressions, YouTube channel. Uh, and now on the precipice <laughs> of the of a long journey uh, to release uh, his stand-up special, Half Blackface. I pre-ordered it on my Apple so that I can watch it, bring it in the new year. It is the homie, friend in real life, JL Coban. What's up, man? Uh, this is a, it's a big day. Well, th today is a big day, but obviously January 2nd is a big day because 20, 2023, I'm not usually, I'm very apathetic about New Year's generally. I just go, okay, I like getting a new desk calendar, you know, like I like, okay, it's like fresh. But but other than that, I'm not like, just time to go. This is my year. It's never my year. Right. So I've given up on that. But 2023 was like particularly not my year. <laughs> like I want to get to 2024 just to be like, can it just be not my year in a regular way? Not in a two shoulder surgeries, special not out for the second straight year. Like all these, all these, I lost my, my day job. Like yeah. 2023 was, was like outside of losing a family member. It was like, it sounds weird to say because there's people with bigger problems, but it was the worst year of my life. Like I've had a good life, all jokes aside. Uh, right. Or as Karen and Joe Biden would say, not trying to be funny. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> it it was it was the worst year of my life. Like mm -hmm. things that I just did, I took for granted, like my health, my right. the fact that two years was long enough for a special to come out. Like that, my mm -hmm. day job that I'd had for four years and worked. You know, all through that time when my comedy was really popping off and I was working like the equivalent of like 16 hour days, just like here's my day job. And now I'm making videos and doing interviews and doing all these other things. And I made it all through that and, and then got laid off this year. So I'm like, yes, this 2024, if we can just get back to normal, we'll feel like a great yeah. year. And, and, and with the special finally coming out, <clears throat> despite a, a noticeable lack of any kind of promotion, but that's something for... Uh, my attorneys to discuss um you know it's out it's gonna be out it's done it's yeah. it's like <laughs> you know it's more like it's more like finishing a marathon than it like it's more of a like and i'm finally not running anymore relief as opposed <laughs> to like take off these oh, shit filled drawers and massage my nipples <laughs> with moisturizer because they have burns on them like that's <laughs> I, comp I compared this to people and i said i know this is a somewhat tasteless analogy but it's how i feel I said, this is supposed to feel like me winning an award or or like a major life accomplishment because it's so good. And it was like, I knew it when I did it. Like, I was like, I did it. I did it. I made, I made this special and it's so good. And I'm so proud. This feels more like, you know, like North Korea has finally agreed to return my grandfather's um, <laughs> body from the battlefield and we can give it a proper military uh, burial. Like right, we can yeah. have closure as a family and a nation instead of it, instead of it being like, we did it. 
we did it. It's more like, yeah. thank you. It's time for somber reflection. Half yeah. black face is finally out. Moment <laughs> of silence, please. Please don't laugh. This is a serious, <laughs> sad occasion. Uh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's hilarious. Your special being one of closure. Is, like, I'm going to post on, on Tuesday. I'm going to post a picture. Of like, <laughs> like a military guy like folding a flag over a casket and be like, my special flag <laughs> me out. Glad <laughs> 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 you made it. Yeah, it's, um, and for those that don't know, can you quickly tell them the ordeal of this particular special, like, because sure. this has been this has been, uh, I believe, oh, years long, long now. Oh, yeah. We done covered a season of Game of Thrones and everything. And <laughs> Game of Thrones came back, did a whole season. It did. And we'll and almost we'll almost be back uh, for the this one. And jail. Like George <laughs> Santos's entire political career happened in between <laughs> this this special. Like he became a congressman and then was not a congressman. And my special was recorded <laughs> before that and hadn't come out during that. <laughs> Basically, what happened was, and this is just something for for this is a little bit of background. Um, Obviously, 2020, 2021 were very big years for me. Impressions, Cameo, YouTube, all that. Um, but in early January 2020, in early February 2021, I got shadow banned when they kicked Trump off of, of Twitter. My account, like I complain about not having an agent, a manager, et cetera, but my Twitter account was doing all the work for me. Like it was, my YouTube videos were getting, you know, 100,000, 200,000 views. That's money. That's a couple hundred bucks per video. When you're putting out a couple of those videos a week, that's real money. And Cameo was killing it. And uh, just different, different things were like, you know, that was my, my agent, my PR, like that's all I needed. And once they kicked Twitter off, it became like my growth, I was, I had seven straight months of adding 10,000 followers a month. And I had somebody do an analysis. It was like 98 point something percent of my followers were real, like for advertising purposes and for like sponsorship. So it was not bots and BS. Right. It hit a brick wall, zero growth starting in February, 2021, zero to, to today. I've obviously lost people who've either quit Twitter or whatever. I yelled at them for being stupid, whatever the reason may be. But that killed everything across the board. You know, people don't know when I have shows. People right. like, I guarantee you 90% of my followers do not know. I still don't know I have a special coming out Tuesday. And so when I, when I saw that happen in 2021, I said, okay, I got a good hour that I'm ready to kind of put together and start working once I can get to the clubs. So I said, you know what? Once I booked Billions that summer, summer of 2021, like I filmed it in 2021, I said, you know what? This, this is a chance for me to like package two things together. An appearance on a big show, like a good role, a good little role. It wasn't like me holding the door for somebody. It was like two scenes that were centered on me and an hour of comedy that I know is great. So if I can get that done and like get it out around the same time, that might be enough to kind of alter the algorithm or get me seen by, hey, now I'm seen by like 50,000 new people who have nothing to do with the Trump impression, my stand-up special, billions. So I talked to um, Helium Comedy Club, which is a club that I've always said in Philly is one of my two favorite clubs in the country. And I say, hey, can I get a set? Like, can I just, I'm trying to, can I get a couple spots at your different clubs? Because I'm trying to run my, run my new hour for a special. And they go, oh, well, if you want to record with us, like, pop, pop, pop. And I said, um, oh, well, I'm doing a, I'm doing, I've, I've always self-produced my own albums. This is a special. So like, I don't need anybody to help me with an album. This, you know, well, we produce specials. If you want to do it in one of our clubs, we've got all our clubs set up for blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, well, that's okay. Cause I got a, um, uh, I'm, I'm doing it in New York. I want to do it in New York. You don't have a club here, but they go, oh, no, we can like our, our people can go and we can film it there. And I'm, I said, oh, okay. And I was thinking like, I'm, I'm, I'm always, I'm very, uh, Kanye asks sometimes on my podcast in terms of my self promotion, not not anti semitism, but in terms of that, you know, <laughs> Kanye. Like I have to boost myself if no one else will at this time. Mm -hmm. And, but I thought, you know what? This isn't about me making like I can make twenty five grand alone on this, like through streaming and sales if I do it myself. I said right. this is a bigger deal. This is this is I need this to take me to a level above where I'm at. I don't know what that level is, but I need it to get me. So partnering with an A-list comedy club 
who have to have contacts and, and different things, that's the smart move. Give up half the money in the short term to, to build a bigger, a bigger opportunity for the, for the special. Cause I don't need, it's not, I don't need that specific chunk of money. I need this special to do what I think it can do, which is be my best work packaged with a cool appearance on a popular TV show. Maybe that can just swing the conversation. Remember him as Trump? He's now on billions and he just put together this very provocative, new, hilarious, special half blackface. So we film it. I get told the next day, you know, we only had one take. As you remember, yeah, the two shows were like half sold. So I said, mm, no, I need this sold out. I need that energy. I, I'll take my chances on a one, one take because I know it'll be good. Will it be perfect? I don't know. Well, it was perfect. It was, I threw a perfect game. That's yeah. the album. The album that came out in August is that set. And he tells me the next day, oh, it sounds great. Looks great. Great. I go touring the country, headlining. It's the greatest I've felt in years. Like all jokes aside, as everybody always yeah. says, JL is like so miserable. This was like the best I felt about comedy in a decade. And because I crushed it, I had these headlining gigs around the country. It felt like a victory lap for what I'd done during COVID and for the special. And I'm in LA in February, early February, 2022. Billions, my billion set is, is got, billions episode is airing um, in three weeks. I'm feeling good. It's sunny. It's 75 degrees in California. I'm the lightest I've been in, in, in like 13 years. I'm like 12 pounds off my college playing weight. It's like, oh my God, I'm doing it. I'm feeling good. This California sun. Blah. I get a call. Hey, Jack, who's the agent kind of promoting this, editing and promoting the special. Hey, Jack saw the set and I got good news and bad news. He definitely wants to work with you and promote it. He likes it, but he says it's a little too shaky and we need to reshoot. And I'm thinking, oh, Jack must be a stickler. Because if we're th thinking Netflix or HBO, I guess you want it perfect. So at least he wants to work with it. That was and what also, I you have been, you've been told at this point the night after that it was perfect. So oh, like, yes, I'm sorry. Night yes. after, yes. I get a call, and he goes, we only had one take, so I want to put your mind at ease. Looks great, sounds great, incredible set, great. And I was like, oh, I did it. Like, I had this very Walter White on the phone with Skyler after, after season four going, yeah. I won. And I don't know who the Gus Fring is in that, <laughs> in that mm -hmm. analogy, the comedy industry, the JL right. jinx, but I was like, I won. And then you see Lily of the Valley and there goes that. <laughs> um, but I get that call and I was so shell-shocked that I didn't absorb right. it yet. And I hadn't, I hadn't seen the set yet because I right. had no reason to believe the set was messed. I'm like, we have a 50% stake in this. So why would you lo like, there's no rational reason I have unless you're terrified of me, <laughs> which, which might've been slightly valid. Yeah. But you're you, why would you lie? Why wouldn't you just tell me now? What happens then is I find out in February, so I've just toured. I've just blown my load. Sorry for the phrase on every club I know. Uh, you can say I just hold on. I just want to. You can say blow your load on our podcast. Okay, okay if there's any you. podcast, you can say. Well, you can say blow yeah. your load. I feel we, like we we're, annual, we're the annual, podcast uh, review for so blow your load. I, I so this okay. is true. Uh, please don't insult us like that. <laughs> I just came back from mass, so I'm, fe I'm okay, still feeling right. holy. I'm sorry. We're just more apologizing to God. I <laughs> <laughs> so I, I hadn't seen the set yet, but I had just toured all these clubs. So I can't go right back to these clubs, some of which I only sold, sold well at and some I sold very mediocre. Hey, can I just come back like in a month to, to run my, my set again? So I'm stuck doing like little 10 minute spots here and there, just trying to like keep fresh. We mm. can't get a remake, a reshoot date until May. Mm. We can't get a reshoot date until May. So I'm like, great. Okay. There goes the billions window, but, and I'm not releasing the album because the, the special is the thing. The right. album is going to be a byproduct, And that was clear from the beginning. So I only get the tape in like late March because I'm like, well, I just want, I know I had some good ad libs and I want to make sure I keep those in for the next set. And, um, I watch it and it looked like it was filmed during an earthquake. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, you thought this looked good? This looked right. like Michael J, Michael J. Fox filmed this during an earthquake. Like <laughs> it was just bumping right. because the camera was like wedged somewhere with the crowd. So of course the JL Jinx in its finest moment was like, 
Yeah, the biggest problem here was JL sold out the show, so the theater was very crowded, and that fucked up the camera. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. Sorry to have one sold out show in my life, and that became did my you downfall. Ever, did you ever contemplate putting the special out and making shaking like some type of new gimmick? Like the shaking <laughs> special, the, you know, like, oh, I, they ain't did this yet. This is. This Y'all is, know nothing about this. This is a four-dimensional experience that brings yeah. you parking sun. <laughs> it go, it's gonna bring you into the into the crowd. You're gonna feel like you're laughing with the crowd. It's, we're gonna put it out in forty X. We're this. gonna put it out in forty X theaters. Okay, it's gonna your chair's gonna <laughs> shake and it's gonna spray water on you and shit. It's gonna JL's tears. JL's tears will hit you from the seat. <laughs> so you know it's real. <laughs> and so when I saw that, I sort of that's when like my I started to kind of feel enraged. Right. Um because then I realized I'd been lied to. Mm-hmm. And so we do the set again and in hindsight after watching it like 15 times, I love it because yeah. I I think the material is better. Like right. I had remember when you were here for season one of Game Theory, we went out for a drink and I told you about a bit that I had put on it about a black yeah. serial killer. That's yeah. how long ago this was. And that's yeah. for the second set. That yeah. that was preparing for the second taping. And so we go through it. At the time, I was disappointed because the crowd was not as good. I actually, this 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 young woman was talking and I had to like stop and be like, we're doing, we're doing a taping. Like, come right. on. So that threw me off a little, but that was edited out well. But the point is, in hindsight, that set is really great. And I think the material is even better. But the energy of the crowd, like that, like the crowd was an A plus on the first one. They were like an A minus on the second show. But whatever, mm-hmm. we finish it. it, it and, and then I get a call in, in June that Jack thinks we can't use the main camera again because once again, it's effed up. And at that point, I'm like delirious. I'm not even able to get angry. I'm like, am I in the Matrix or like a nightmare? Yeah. But it looked so good from the two kind of side angles that that's what we use. That's what they edit together. Editing took longer because they had no main camera. They only had one show. So they had to piece it together off of two side cameras. So they did a very good job with that, but that was the end of 2022. It was done. So we went the entire year without it coming out. Right. So, um, without getting into other issues. Uh, but that is that is the saga. So the whole year it, it it was sold or whatever to be distributed by Comedy Dynamics. So it's going to be available for like play, pay, you know, pay and rental on like a dozen different platforms, which sadly I was at a party uh, at my cousin's last night and, and they were they were like, oh, wow. Like I, they were like, oh, wow, comedian, when, when's your special? And I told them about the concept of the special. They're like, wow, that's great. And um, they're like, so like Netflix or Amazon Prime. I was like, no, nah, you got to pay for it. And it immediately feels like you almost start apologizing. Like, right. you're like, I'm sorry, I ain't shit. Uh, I know I'm, I am. But in your mind, I understand why you're like, oh, that's right. cool. You do a thing I have to pay for. That's not what yeah. Chris Rock does. Which, which really, which honestly says way more about us. It really yeah. says way more about what, what streaming and content and shit and all the free shit on social media has done to us in that uh uh even if this wasn't you know uh like netflix streaming era right if this was back when hbo had comedy um you still ended up paying for a lot of your comedy just yes, because did, if hbo only cleared like four motherfuckers a year everybody else was out here slanging you know what i'm saying you yeah. buying shit at the show you doing it. now we are at a point where that's where Netflix has bought and all not just Netflix, all of Everybody. them have bought so much yeah. fucking content. Everybody's like, I got 18 streaming services. So they, are you on one of those? Yeah, it's not te- <laughs> yeah, but it's not technically that they didn't, they're not paying for it. They're right. actually paying for Netflix every month, right? And probably not watching any comedy specials. And they're like, I have to actually like seek out and pay for yours. It's <laughs> yeah, it's un- it's 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 unfortunate, I guess. But um, but Laura, my my girlfriend, is taking me to a Ranger game on Tuesday night, and I think part of that was like to celebrate, and part of it was definitely so I can't be sitting at home going, I can't believe it's out and nothing happened and my career is over. Mm-hmm. So you know, to be in a loud arena with sports and 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 snack food is is like I can't. I'll just be like out of it. Will be like out of my mind then. But it's I'm I'm yeah. really happy with it like as a as a product and 
it, it, I did. I kept up my end of the bargain. I wanted to deliver the yeah. best thing I've ever done, and I did. And hopefully, yeah, man. I, I, I mean, I've already heard the audio album, um, which is just like I, I, it's masterful. Honestly, uh, it, it's, it's probably the best special I've listened to, or or heard, you know, listened to, seen, whatever, you know, this year. And there, and there were some pretty good specials this year. In oh, my thank opinion. you. I think I got. Uh, I actually thought 2023 was like a, a decent year for comedy compared to uh, the last Matt Rife. Years. I mean, yeah, okay. Yo, your shit was Matt Rife, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I just you see know, Matt Rife is another be, example women of be what happened. JLC, I don't know if you've yeah. heard this, but women be shopping and talking. And if she don't make your plate, D- d- she already got one black eye. You see what I'm saying? So that no, you know she don't know how to listen. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> um, yeah, and and I will spoil it here. A sketch that I'm writing and hoping to do in January, in the spirit of my Comedy Academy series, Matt Reif Comedy Class, where I will yeah. play Matt Reif's comedy, uh, good, like comedy teacher. You know, and uh, it will be you know like first lesson do bicep curls. Second, who was the coolest <laughs> black? Who was the coolest black dude you went to high school with? <laughs> Do him. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm looking forward to that, man. I'm a, I'm a Patreon <laughs> member, and uh, you know, also just for years I've been following you. So, you know, I love the sketches, and so anytime you, you got a sketch or a new impression, I'm always like excited to hear about it. Uh, I, I I don't hit you up with my ideas because I feel like you get enough of that from your own fans. No, uh, but you're that's different. Like you 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 always can because uh you're you're invited to the JL um uh <laughs> input cookout. Okay. <laughs> the, Most the idea people was, are not. <laughs> the idea I was thinking about is uh you know you do your Italian guy the, yes. the new that guy but as a Jimmy girl uh as a uh D- DeVito fan uh, ah, watching right. games and shit because I mean, it, it might be too late because the Vito era might be up, but like, I would have paid good money to see <laughs> the Italian reaction to when Tyrod Taylor <laughs> took that motherfucker's job. <laughs> Damn it, you should have told me, you should have told me because that, that I mean. That is like some good fellas level racism right there. Like, I get it. He's a talented quarterback. What's your point? What's your point? Okay, because he runs around the field fast. That's not quarterback. And quarterback, you stand in the pocket. You stand tall. You look your receiver in the eye. You throw it to him. Not this running around like we're in the jungle. Like, oh, hey, look at me. I'm running around. You can't catch me. That ain't football. That ain't football. Okay. <laughs> yes. you, gotta, you gotta learn the background being mom and shit. <laughs> hey mom. Well, I was gonna you know what I almost did? I was gonna call into the I was gonna leave a message where I was having a fake conversation with Laura, but I start yelling like like Jonathan Majors, but about comedy. And I'm like, <laughs> I am a great comedian. Okay, you need to be like Chappelle's wife, like George Carlin's wife. I'm a great comedian. I didn't ask for it. I just am. <laughs> right. I am yes. doing this for biracial people. I am yes. important. Oh, uh, man. Yes, Rashida yes. Jones needs to hear comedy she can relate to. <laughs> <laughs> that's that. That's great. And, uh, uh, JL, one of my ideas, I know this might sound stupid, but uh, I remember we was online and I was telling you your rain on your parade. Looks like all your characters are like in in a uh, cozy game. You just coming in. I would love a video game. Oh, yeah. A, a, a video game of people just like minding their business <laughs> and all of a sudden they hit a theme music and you just raining on them. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's, that's, that's yeah, the like game. that is, I am, I am like a cozy game ruiner. <laughs> yeah, the opposite of a cozy game. Uh, uh, here's, the, here's the villain. Um, man, and then like, so let's talk about rain one, on your parade. One, too. one thing oh, about the Italian character, what I'm mm-hmm. writing, and I don't, I don't mind, you know, sharing with you guys. Hopefully, not, hopefully nobody will take this idea. But I'm writing my first movie script. Of course, it's going to go nowhere, probably. But it's called Giuseppe Fetch It, uh, Giuseppe Fischetti. Sorry, Giuseppe Fischetti. Like, but obviously, like- it's inside that is Step and Fetch It, and it's about, <laughs> it's about. Hear me out. Mm-hmm. A biracial comedian who who doesn't look uh, half black. People think right. he's Italian or Jewish, 
and he's struggling to get, you know, even though there's kind of a diversity push in entertainment, he's yes. not getting anywhere. And then he sees that the only group of like white comedians making moves are these over the top Italian caricatures. Yeah. And so he, with the help of his friends, like one, one friend is like a black dude, but who's obsessed <laughs> with like mob movies and stuff. So he's actually the consultant. Yeah. His friends get him like he drops out of comedy and basically like for a while and like gets himself in shape, grows his hair out and slicks it back, comes back as like the most offensive Italian stereotype comic and blows up. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So it's almost honestly, it's literally like the way I would pitch it is like, yeah. imagine a racially reversed soul man. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and it works. Right. And then of course he can fall in love. Like there's, there's like an Italian female love interest who's not a racist and whatever. Right. <laughs> and you know, but she's offended, but like, she, you know, so you get, you know, it's, I'm, I'm excited about that. I don't know if it, but that's, I feel like that is a very unique, uniquely JL project. Yeah. That, that at least I would feel like I don't think anybody submitted this. this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. I love the idea, man. That, that shit would be so funny. And there's so, so many. So that's like, that's like my first like third of the, that's like my January to April like focus is that. Yeah. Cause like uh, that, um, the Rain on Parade, on your parade is, is such a funny show. Um, oh, thank you. Is, and then I I do think having the co-host, you know, everyone's right. Mm -hmm. uh, it just adds a, a level of, um, so, you know, when you press play on a podcast, there's a level of expectation <laughs> that, that, that comes with what show you're listening to. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, in the Righteous Prick era, you just kind of never knew. You just never <laughs> knew. You were getting, you no, know? It's no, like, you just never know. So sometimes... You get in there, you be like, oh, okay, today's a good day. <laughs> the next time you get in there, you be like, it ain't that bad, you know? <laughs> and then the next time, like, oh my God, do I need to call somebody to right. welfare check? Is JL going off yourself? Yeah, today? is it's, this the last yeah, am episode? I, am I going to be reading an episode, uh, 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 a newspaper article that is going to be like, lawyer jumps off a building yeah. and then we're going to find it. I would, I would listen to episodes and then go. And JL's last story. moment was, I hope they identify me as a comedian and not a lawyer in my obituary. <laughs> 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 yeah, I would go, I would be listening to the episode and be like panic and go check his Twitter and be like, oh, thank God. And yeah, he's complaining yes. about how he's complaining about how people keep punching down his jokes. Sorry, he's alive. I, I will admit, though, and I, I I completely agree. And Mike, you know, in addition to being funny in his own right and and contributing, it's 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 the discipline. He 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 keeps the show disciplined and doesn't let me give in to my worst impulses. And for people who remember when I would have like Mike Payne, my friend Mike Payne, on years ago, when I have somebody <clears throat> almost to half perform for. It, yeah. it raises my wit and my like in like I'm just sharper and all honestly, around. Honestly, like, and he's getting he's getting uh, even better at this. But uh, sometimes pushing against the idea makes the idea better. It's just kind of knowing when to push and when not because you know sometimes you know it's a, a yes and situation. It's like no, it'll be better if you vote for yes and. But <clears throat> sometimes if the idea is challenged, you find either better gold. Or, you know, at least, and then as a listener, because, you know, it's raining on people's parade, it helps because you're raining on the parade of people that are listening that might be like, oh, man, but I kind of like that thing. And it's like, oh, here's a guy in the room going like, well, okay, some people do like this. And then you could be like, oh, well, yeah, they might like that, but that's, here's why that's fucked up. So, like, yeah, I, I'm enjoying the balance of it Thank um, you. and, and uh, enjoying the show. And you're covering some big topics and stuff. Are are you are there topics you're looking forward to in 2024? Um, well, the first one, I didn't think I don't think it's like our best episode, and I blame myself for that. But the first episode, this this went this Thursday is like fitness, because we figured like like fitness influencers and stuff. And I figured New Year, that might be like a, a good topic that since people be thinking mm -hmm. that way. And I I want to do the next episode. Um, it's some stuff that I've talked about in the past on the show, but but like kind of law enforcement in general. It's not like it's just my own experience as, as a process. It'll be funny, but also just things I've been thinking about um, in general about like law enforcement in this country. I figure that's also going to be kind of an interesting topic. 
Um, but yeah. usually it's just I come up with something the week of, um, you know, maybe a couple of weeks in advance where I'm like, OK, that would be a good thing to have a 30 minute discussion on. Um, and I just I have to I have to say this. I'd be remiss if I didn't bring this up or force this into the conversation. I just finished Cast by uh, Isabel mm -hmm. Wilkerson. And I mean, two for two with like two grand slams of, mm -hmm. of books. Inc incredible. Like and so did like one was just a straight up history book. And one is more like a quasi personal narrative, but also with the scope of history. But when I saw the trailer for the movie Origin, yeah, which is the Ava DuVernay, uh, her yeah. movie, so B plus, her movie about. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm I, 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 I watched. I watched. <laughs> her, her, so Bernthal is in it. Bro, mm -hmm. see, this, I don't know what you're about to say, but let me just say, <laughs> I think Bernthal is trying to replace Chris Pine. I, I'm I'm peeping I'm peeping some moves he's making to mm -hmm. slide into the Chris Pine good white man like mm. role in life and in in TV shows and movies. And and I'll tell you when he what he needs because <clears throat> after Rustin when I saw Rustin mm -hmm. I was like oh I like that and then the song at the end the Lenny Kravitz song I was like this is terrible this is they're trying to do yeah. a Glory John John Legend which yes. is great. John right. Legend come. They're trying to do their own. And I'm like, uh-uh, this isn't it. This is terrible. <laughs> nope. and, and I think what Bernthal needs is for the Lenny Kravitz song to inexplicably get nominated for best song. And it, it's Lenny Kravitz. Right. It's, it's the Obamas. So it has better a better chance than it should because of who's behind it. But it's not a good right. song. You, John Bernthal needs that. And he needs to be invited to the Oscars for like the origin group. And then he can get his Chris Pine tier. Yes. Now here's the thing. I've seen or completed have, it. <laughs> have have you seen Origin yet? No. Because I don't even know if it's out. Okay. All right. It's, so I've seen Origin. Okay, I've seen Origin for a screener, right? Mm -hmm. They end it with one of them songs, with one of them like 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 almost <laughs> it almost made me roll my eyes because it's so <laughs> much like you know what I'm like. <laughs> Like hey, but come on now, two like you you, get, you got one, you, yeah. you're getting green to get two, and it and it's not a song they play at any point throughout this movie, right. and then it's just like the 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 fucking, and it's a somber movie. It's a somber as fuck, sad sure. David Turner movie. And as soon as the fucking credits hit and that motherfucking song starts slapping, I'm like, hey, but you do it. This is one gonna week. <laughs> <laughs> gonna be John Bernthal's like he's gonna be crying, and we're gonna and then fucking. Uh, 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 uh. Black Twitter's yeah, gonna fucking swoon. Um, yes. Vanilla movie, King, Vanilla King, John yeah, Bernthal, and like, like uh, I'm so glad JL's here because because I these are the jokes I don't normally tell or talk about with other people, but. Dog, in this fucking movie, this guy is such a like shining white knight of just. Is he her like, husband? Yes, he is soy boy, vanilla king, <laughs> cup. Like he is so he is, but he like commits to the bit in such a way. Like there's just lots of like staring in her face, inches apart. Look, like lose him looking at Ajinua, like like girl, this you're the finest woman on this earth, and like there's a scene where legitimately I just want to be your vanilla sprinkles on that <laughs> fine chocolate ice cream, man. Yeah. <laughs> there's a scene where he legitimately comes over and like white man explains something to somebody who's not listening to her because she's a black woman. We know the person. It's like, uh, ma'am, uh, I think I know how to do a roof, and he's like. Comes across the street like, hey, he, is he bothering you? What? Like, <laughs> what? Listen, listen, Jack. Okay, you're not. I was like, this is the yeah. Is this motherfucker don't win something. I don't know who the acting his I'm ass out. Sad. I'm sad you saw it already because when I read when I saw him in the commercial and then finished the book, I was yeah. like, oh, I wonder if he plays if he plays her husband. And I had this whole thing in my mind of him kind of doing you know. There's interview John Bernthal who's like positive right. and like. You know, I just if I could take you out maybe one night for a drink or maybe dinner, that would be great. I'd really I'd really appreciate that. You know, she's such a beautiful woman. You know, I think we could and then I was waiting for the and then a white man disrespects her and he's like, 
you <laughs> gonna disrespect my wife. <laughs> 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 Let go Man, full you see this shit. Wait till you see this shit, dog. Oh my yes. god. Yeah, I thought about you when I watched it. I was like, oh my god, Dale's gonna have a fucking field day. Um <laughs> but uh also like um another character that I want to see is the uh Cornell. Well, it's not Cornell West. What what is it? I keep fucking it up. Uh, Dark Myth East. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Although I am doing, I'm finally, I'm delivering because it's been tough. Like, as I have Laura, we, our schedules are weird. So like, I, I like to film during the day for the natural light. Like, I don't want to set up all the lights that I have. Right. So like January 2nd, day it comes out, I'll be in my, in my living room doing some Cornell West content. And I had like, I can't wait to do these videos. Like I've, I, the fro and the goatee, I'm sure will not look right. I have right. like some makeup to create a big gap in my teeth. <laughs> But I keep thinking like I like all these I Laura like once a month has a joke that act, that makes me laugh and she's always like, is that my joke of the month? And I said to her, can you name some brothers like you know Super Mario Brothers but and she said property brothers and I said my first yeah. video by Cornell West is gonna be Israel Palestine and what I'm gonna do with the character is create these non sequiturs where I go, yeah. And then now you see what we have to do is we have to find peace. We have to find peace with our Israeli brothers, our Palestinian brothers, property brothers. We got to get them involved too. <laughs> and just, it's going to be things like that where yeah. it's like, what's he talking about? But he just gets on riffs. So <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, it's going to be videos like that. No, 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 no. We have to do this. You know, we have to find, you know, uh, neoliberal, neo fascist, neo from the Matrix. <laughs> it's just gonna be that kind of a thing and i've kind of i don't have i wanted to go full black suit cufflinks yeah. and everything but what i did was i got the fro uh the gap tooth the, the goatee and i have like a cornell west 2024 shirt and i'm just gonna wrap like a black scarf oh, like okay yeah. so i have so it's something because i we can already anticipate Oh my God, this is perfect. You just need the three peat suit and cufflinks. Right. It's like, get out blocked, yeah. blocked. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> but it will happen. I'm mentally preparing myself for like, all you need now is insert $500 worth of garments. <laughs> so <I'm> like, no. <laughs> okay. So you need to get a dolly, a cameraman, uh, <laughs> right. you know, maybe direct, get Spike Lee to direct it. Like, shut the fuck up. But uh -huh. I, I like want to use the impression part as like something that even Cornell West fans could enjoy. But right. there's, I'm also going to include some things, you know, my sister, sister Jill Stein, sister Jill Stein was right. We have a two party system that's not working for people. So send me donations and I'll ruin everything. I'll ruin it right now. <laughs> I'll ruin it. Yeah. It's Cause like, <laughs> I remember I made a joke uh, on Twitter about him uh, because he uh, actually owed, owed a lot of money and like child support that he was behind mm -hmm. on. And then he starts his campaign and then he keeps leaving to, cause he's like, Wait, the Green Party get some of the money? No, no, I gotta move. To, I gotta go I to the Cornell West the Party, money. motherfucker. And, Join uh, Cornell West Patreon. I've decided to raise money through Patreon. How about that? <laughs> and so he, he, uh, I said this joke about him, you know, being a Debbie dad or something or something. I was like, yeah, he's leaving parties like as his kids, and just people were responding like, that is so racist. I was like, the, 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 wait, do you how you? I thought you were the Cornell West fan person who was right. upset. This has nothing to do with him being black. This has everything to do with this motherfucking child support, man. Right. Oh my god. Um, but well, I'm, I'm afraid he's gonna get. I think he's gonna end up getting. Um, I don't know if he'll rise to the level of Jill Stein, but and I have a joke on half blackface where I talked about. Um, I talk about the N word. And yeah. I talked about like a Dominican dude using it. <laughs> and, and I said, I feel like if 25% of your demographic or more voted for Trump, you don't, you don't get to use it. Right. So it's like black women are the safest <laughs> with their usage. But then I made a joke where I said 18% of black men voted for Trump in, in right. 2020. I was like, that's only 7% more until everything is a clean close. edit. And we're yeah. getting close. <laughs> we're getting, we're getting cl close. Like it's, it's, and I feel like Cornell West is going to be that sort of either protest vote or like I'm not voting for Trump, but I want to I want to signal my disgust with with Joe Biden. And and I do see it. Here's my thing with here's my thing with Cornell though. I don't think black people would vote for him. 
Mm-mm. I think the people that are going to protest vote for him are white people. Are white. You know, it's your Bill Maher types. It's your right. it's your Chapo Trap House types. It's because no, no offense to Cornell, but like we don't bang with him like that anymore. Not like anymore. Like at some at some he, around he, his appearance in the Matrix too. It's just like, and when he dropped the rap album, it's like he 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 flew too close to the sun. Yeah, and his that. wings melted with black folks. White people don't know yet. It's like Nick Cannon or, you know, like, you know, these people, Shannon Sharp, where, like, white people are like, oh, black people, they, they love him. He's so cool. But they don't know what the fuck they do mm-hmm. when they're not around no. the white people. Right. I think Cornell's kind of slid into and- this, like, he tells, his pitch to them is, listen, I'm the, the black person, liberal whisperer. But to us, it's like, no, no. We're, you, what are you, you doing, you're Cornell? You're a joke. And also, I think him... Being offended and him and his and Obama's uh, his yeah. bro, him and his uh, partner out Tavis here Smiley. doing the uh, fuck uh, Obama tour bus yeah. across the country made a lot of people be like, "Nigga, we love Obama. The fuck is wrong with you?" Yeah, it's not right. zero black people, but it's just not a significant amount right. to to derail anything. It, that's one of the weirdest parts about him running is he doesn't have enough pull to be a spoiler. I think you mm-hmm. would need like. Three or four, you would need like I don't think Jill Stein has a pull anymore, but you need right. like Jill Stein, Cornell West, Robert, that new Robert Kennedy dude. Like right. you like you need like four or five people to siphon off a little, little piece. Yes. To fuck up the election, I think. I just think what I've seen, unfortunately, in people in my life that, you know, the um the Gaza issue is like that's when you're talking about taking off a little slice, like yeah. People, uh, black dudes that that I that I talk with who are like furious at Biden mm-hmm. about Gaza, and I'm I'm of the opinion, and I'm not. I know you guys have discussed it. You know, yeah. I think Netanyahu is a piece of shit. Like he is a terrible dude, and I think people don't seem to realize like Joe Biden. Like it's bigger. Like Israel is an ally. They are a strategic and close historical ally. Like. It would right. be like telling England to fuck off or France to fuck. They can't do that like that way. So you embrace him publicly. But behind the scenes, there's no doubt in my mind that Biden is like, you got to stop this. But the problem is they're negotiating with a dude who kind of has that Trump mentality of, well, as yes. long as there's war and fear, I stay in power. So yeah. you're not dealing with somebody who is going to be at all open to reasonable things. But the question is, how do you step away in global politics? How do you like completely rebuke a close ally? You can't really do it in the way that people are like, why won't Biden just tell Israel to suck his dick? He's right. like, horrible. Like that, that the fallout right. from that would be ridiculous. What do people think? Right. It's and then it would be open season on and and people always want to make it like, oh well, the, you know, Jewish people in this country have too much power. That's why it's it's not, it really isn't that. It's right. it's it's a strategic ally in a hot part of the of the world. And yeah, I, think, I, uh, I was watching listening to the daily and they also did this great breakdown of how people view the conflict by age. And that was <clears throat> probably yeah. one of the most astute angles that uh, anyone's covered it from, which is if you're Joe Biden's age, you watch Israel like be formed, be attacked, defend itself um, <clears throat> and then this right wing government come into power um, and kind of flip the narrative, but it's been, it's been the oppressed and, and the downtrodden for your life much longer Correct. than it's been this Netanyahu shit. Mm-hmm. So to a person like Joe Biden, it's still like, we need to defend this. And everyone in his age, like they broke down the poll by like age groups. It's not until you get to the youngest group. That's why right. I'm like, I don't even think on a race issue, I really don't think that you're going to lose like this huge group of black people because of it. I think you're, it's the young it's definitely people. Not huge, gonna- but I think, I think what we're shaping up for is where the margins are going to count. Unfortunately, that's so every group counts, even if it's not a big group, because I mean, the fact that we're in this situation where it's like Trump yeah. might win and we're not all embarrassed. You've said it. I've said yeah. it. Where I'm like 2016, I don't give a fuck if Hillary Clinton told Wisconsin to fuck off. Right. It's on the voters. It's on the voters who chose Trump, period. Like, 
Hillary Clinton should have campaigned. Oh, and that would have made a bunch of misogynists love her and not call her a corrupt right. or something, whatever they right. whatever they say. Please, like this this idea of like, and and this goes back to like, it's it's the it's the it's the hypocrisy of sort of white feelings, right? And I mean, white conservative feelings, because when liberals, whether they be people of color or white have feelings or are hurt by something it's like it's, this is what's wrong with it we're too sensitive whether right. it's joke or policies facts data man facts and data it doesn't matter but when 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 republican white people feel hurt or abandoned it's like these are very valid central feelings because our feelings represent like some in some bizarre way strength and trying to stand up for our way of life so it's mm -hmm. those feelings are actually good, strong, worthy feelings. When you're like whining about being mistreated and like history and uh, like systemic stuff, that's not my day to day. That's some bo academic bullshit for for whiny liberals who are too soft and snowflakes. And and never you ne they never the cognitive dissonance is so strong right. that like you don't see like you're. It's it, I see it in comedy clubs where it's like. Yeah. When I did a show in Suffolk, which is like MAGA, like not even like Republican, it's like Alabama, but yeah. they were like 90% of the audience. I crushed it with them because I made jokes about how I voted for Joe Biden. And now you're booing me. Like if I did, the, if somebody got up here and said Trump and they booed him, would you be like, oh, no, you'd say you snowflakes, cancel right. culture. So that got them to realize, but they were in a position of strength because they mm -hmm. outnumbered me by 90%. Mm -hmm. Whereas... When I did a show a few months later in a more even crowd in Long Island, it was 50-50, I walked, doing the same material, I walked tables because they didn't feel in the position of power. They were vulnerable and therefore a comedian making jokes about Trump was enough to leave and say, this guy sucks. Mm -hmm. And it was like, that's what we see in this country is this like, <laughs> when, they, when they feel vulnerable, sense no longer gets through. Right. You know, and their feelings are like, no, 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 you don't get it. When I'm upset, it's because society is crumbling. Right. <laughs> you know? well, yeah. I'm trying to help you and us. But when <laughs> like a black person complains about something and sees racism everywhere, right. that's like some bullshit. That's bullshit. And it's like we can't yeah. cater to that because like that's weak. Yeah, I and, saw a Republican, I saw a Republican uh Shouting out a woman who burned out an abortion clinic yesterday on Twitter, being like, "Yes," and yeah, it's the same when 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 there's a, a, a riot or a march or something about Black Lives Matter, the first thing they throw out is they're gonna burn down the city and do, we will not take property damage. But okay, burning down the abort the one abortion clinic that's allowed in the fucking state. That's, you know, stand up and clap. We'll do whatever it takes. Uh, the, uh, but I just want to crystallize something about the Cornell West point. I'm not mm -hmm. saying that the grievances about Biden and, and Israel are not going to come back to haunt them right. or that that's not a real grievance and that will lose votes. I'm saying Cornell West won't be the, the beneficiary of it. I think it'll be people just not voting. I don't think it'll yeah. be like, I'm going to show up and vote for Cornell. I don't think he has the pull he used to have. That would that people would do that. J even Jill Stein, you know, people would it would. I'm going to protest vote for Jill Stein to prove a point. I think he has lost a lot of cultural relevance. Um, but yeah, I do think that is. I mean, it's real that that will be a backlash to. Right. Uh, I mean, depending on how long it, you know, because I, I mean, it's easy to say with our fucking uh, ADHD brains and shit. Who and we might get to November and there's twelve other crises, but I just know in general. He will take a ding for that, period. And he would have taken a ding either way. Like, mm -hmm. he could come out reverse course today. We're never approving arms. We're what about the lives that were already lost? Blood on his hands. Yeah. I'm done. Biden's done. Get yeah. out of here. It's, it's, yeah, it's a wrap. It's a wrap either way. And a lot, of, and that's another thing is a lot of these folks were already not fucking with Biden. And then right. this is just like the latest reason not to fuck with Biden, but they were going to not fuck with him in general anyway. I think, I think there is an element to this, whether it's subconscious or conscious, like they didn't vote for Hillary Clinton because they, they, they felt like they were safe making this, like I didn't mm -hmm. vote for Hillary. And then they got the worst thing ever for their values and for their policies. But with Biden, I think for a lot of reasons, regret over Trump, like seeing Trump in action, 
the fact mm-hmm. that Biden was a man, mm-hmm. um, the fact that he was, you know, like he's an old white man. Right. But I'm but I'm saying even from the progressive standpoint of the, like, no, that, I am. too. I, yeah. OK. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm saying let's uh, fuck what progressive people talk about. We had an opportunity in the primary to vote for every kind of yes. person they, except the old white man. Every kind of person and they said they wanted. Everybody had a problem with subconsciously, subconsciously, regardless of how woke these people present subconsciously, they feel safer with an old white man doing it. The dings against him are the dings that ran up against every single other candidate that that you did that that didn't win the vote. Mm-hmm. Um, with crime policies, Kamala Harris it knocked her too hard; she couldn't do it. Joe Biden, author of the crime bill, didn't knock him hard enough. We voted for him. Um, you know every uh, you know every every single issue that people had. He, you know, oh the gaps of um, Beto. Joe, Joe Biden got mad gaffes, but he just is just bulletproof in that way. So I think that's a part of it. I think also Trump's presidency is probably the biggest recruiter of votes for Democrats and Biden. And the memory spans of these people being so short is literally Ooh. like, well, he's not president anymore. And uh, fuck it. Joe Biden didn't like give us a utopia, even though numbers back up shit it, like fuck, fuck all those numbers and data. Right. I don't feel this is why I, I kind of disagree a bit about the conservative feelings and liberal feel, white feelings. They're the same to me in many ways. Yes, they are. Because yeah. white liberal white people are like, I don't feel good about this presidency. I guess I'm talking from the perspective of of the right. Like, but yes, yeah. you're right. I'm saying, but yeah. that's the way the way MAGA sees it. it but, yeah. but you're right. Yes, there's definitely. I mean, we're in. When I hear people. And I think you may have seen the post I posted. It was my biggest thing on threads. I guess when you post political things, it becomes like a, a beehive of, of yeah. angry people. They're all, they're all like, passed off from X. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I was just like, Bi- the Biden presidency, when you consider all the things he has in his way, has been great. Like against yes! the curve, against the curve. And I go, look at the economic numbers. And they're like, are you kidding me? Uh, somebody was like, inflation is 20%. I'm like, that's some like South American like nightmare shit. And right. I was like, inflation is 3.1%. And what did the person say? You're going to believe those stats? I'm like, I don't know. Right. Those are the official stats, dude. I didn't pull well, my off wife, of, like, a tweet. feelings. My feelings are more important than those facts, JL. It don't matter. Like my favorite is the, it doesn't matter what the economic numbers say. Fuck you, bitch. Because if the numbers were bad, it would matter. If the numbers right. were bad, You'd be on people would be on TV every day, like look at these fucking economic numbers. Just when gas went up, like two or three years ago, when he first took office, it was leading every broadcast. Like, and it was they were blaming him as if he the gas as if he went outside and said raise the gas prices. They were blaming him. They were like fuck the context of the world that gas was up everywhere. Fuck all that shit. It was just Joe Biden's fault. When it comes down, it's like well people people don't feel like the gas is down. It's like and what if, the if fuck I'm is Biden, that? If I'm Biden, age and the fact that you are you are trying to be president in an alternate reality from a lot of the voters, like somebody, uh, Trey Swindu just said, uh, homicide numbers are way down. They are. There was just yep. an article yesterday, and I had somebody write, but weren't they like record highs before? And I said, no, no, they were high after the pandemic from record lows, like right. national record low murder rates. So yes, they went up high relative to that. And now there's been a steep decline. And he right. said, wrong, sorry, Trump. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Like once again, if if this idea of like people will say to me, like the economy is tanking and crime is out of control. And I'm like, well, the opposite, the right. uh, not, not like a degree, you're saying up, and it's down. Right. And, and like, yeah. people are like they laugh. And this this is my example that I did on stage and, and also on the podcast with um, in Oklahoma during the race for governor there. Um, the, the, the Democratic candidate who didn't have a prayer in hell said, you know, actually, the murder rate in Oklahoma is higher than the murder rate in New York City. Like and mm-hmm. the governor, the sitting governor who's reelected was just like, <laughs> OK, <laughs> right. And it was like, that was enough for people because they just think, oh yeah, no, Oklahoma, we're like good people. And New York City is like, you know, Escape from New York starring Kurt Russell. It's a complete (laughs) Right, right. Right. So you can just laugh it off because nobody's even going to believe you when you just say, no, no, no. 
it's true. Yes, there are more murders in New York because people move there and like it. They don't live in the fucking stolen land of the Osage people. Right, right, yeah. You, you guys did all the, you guys did all the murders earlier. Yeah. So you guys got your murders out of the way we with to the catch genocide up. a couple years a couple hundred years ago. So so you guys are ahead of the curve with murders. You just didn't count. When, them. when you have when you like there is this I mean, it is it's if I were Biden, and I know he he I'm sure he thinks still and people who have this fantasy of like, well, uh, Gavin Newsom would destroy Trump or Gretchen Whitmer would right. destroy right. Trump. And I go should destroy right. Trump right. Um, until the woman with the leather jacket and the folksy accent right. and, and then Fox News going, you know, um, this Vivek Ramaswamy in one of the debates, he was going right. four of the people. For, excuse me, if I can talk four of the people who are uh, uh, charged with the kidnapping of the governor. It was deemed an extortion and they were acquitted, ignoring the fact that nine people were convicted in the plot. Right. He's just presenting it like, and that's what they do. They would just say, oh, Gretchen Whitmer, she was part of that fake plot. She probably yeah. set up a plot to kidnap her. And who, what governor, what, what bitch wears a leather jacket? Act like a governor. You're a governor, and not some biker chick. I'll action. take it. One, I'll <laughs> take it one step further because those people were never going to vote for her, right? Like mm -hmm. you're never going to get those Fox people on your side. It would be our own folks that would destroy it. The second Gavin Newsom become, would become the front runner, it would become people from California, black folks, all kinds. Well, what about this one policy that he passed as a governor that, that, that affected some people negatively? And it would become like, yeah, I've seen it. It happened on Twitter when we had the primaries, and it would be one fucking thing. They yeah. were hanging on these people, and they would, and you couldn't blame Fox News. You couldn't blame Republicans. You couldn't blame the right wing people that are, you know, in crazy town on social. It would be the left wing. In many cases, social media has enabled. Social media has yeah. a certain type of currency, mm -hmm. and I think liberal people are in denial of 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 being in the currency. Republicans have just completely given in cravenly right. to the currency. It's it's the you know it's like the the version of the algorithm that makes comedians put up crowd work. It's like that, but politically, where it's just like, no, I'm going to find the one thing that the, the liberal person didn't do right, make that my whole personality and how I won't fuck with them, and just ignore the, the rest of the context of the, the other people that are competing for the office, what's going to happen when this person lose. I feel zero responsibility. They should have been perfect if they wanted my vote, and I think we're headed for that shit again uh, as far as content is concerned in 2024. But I, I'm still more optimistic than most people because I really think there's a large percentage of people who don't give a fuck about this shit anymore. They, they and don't. Who, are, who really are pragmatic and just aren't participating. I think, because I know I've experienced it. I know my friends are experiencing it. I'm watching people experience this idea of like, oh, I'm done arguing with you about it. Right. I think you sound ridiculous. I'm I'm just going to go vote and we'll fucking see. Maybe we won't have enough, but everything you guys are saying, we've done already. So, like, mm -hmm. I don't want to go through this shit again in 2024. Karen, right. what are you going to say? And that's also one of those things, back to the murder rate. <laughs> it's amazing how Republicans run on this murder rate and a lot of the laws and shit that they're passing about abortions. Um, uh, abortions. Because if you go back through your history, murder rates were ridiculously high prior to abortions because people were having all these unwanted children. Mm. And you had people with a lot of people in poverty, a lot of people with the without, and a lot of people were just robbing people and murdering and killing them because you had this, this overpopula overpopulation of lower income people mm. that actually impacted the economy with this jump and this boost in population. Mm. Okay, so now women are allowed to have the right and control their body, so numbers kind of drop and the birth rates drop which in turn means a lot of the murder rates because we don't have this populace, we're not all packed on top of each other has dropped. And what's, and, and my prediction is what's gonna happen is that you reversing all these laws and forcing them, not everybody, but you're forcing people to have children. A lot of these children are gonna be born into poverty and are, nobody really wants to take care of these children. Nobody gives a fuck about the right. children after they're born. You don't want to put policies and procedures to help them. You don't want to assist them. You're right. like, fuck it. So now you're going to have this lower class. You're going to have people going to have more jobs, mm -hmm. than, uh, more people than jobs. You're going to have uh, a lot of these people just robbing and just trying and, to do what they can to survive. Thing. Here's the thing, though. It'll Because of how the Supreme Court ruled, it'll be state by state, meaning 
Republican states will be the ones that deal with this shit and blame Democrats. That's how it works. Is they'll be like, like right. I read some right before we came in the air. Arkansas has more teen moms than any other state, and New York leads the nation in oldest new moms over forty. So that like, but out, but I guarantee you the people running for office in Alabama are like fucking Joe Biden and the liberal judges and the activists. Da, da, da. It, it is it's like. No, it's your own fucking policies yes. that are leading to you motherfuckers being downtrodden. But what can I say when the catnip of bigotry is so delicious to those voters that th- these facts do not matter to them? Yeah. They will not see the policies that directly affect them that lead to them having more you know, teen moms than anybody else as like a thing that their politicians have done to them. They'll just see it as like a the liberal Americans did this to us. Who, you know, who, 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 who made me reap the benefits of my own action? I mean, consequences of my own action. Mississippi ran like Elvis's nephew or something. They were like, "This will get him." They, as a Democrat, like this, if Elvis doesn't work, we are lost. <laughs> against <laughs> Tate Reeves, Tate Reeves, who just looks like he looks to me like somebody from Mississippi burning. Like, mm-hmm. like the fat, like, you know, like a uh, good uh, businessman in town who like at night puts on a hood. I'm not saying he does, but he, yeah. he looks like that. And it's like Mississippi. Right. And I think you retweeted this when I, when I posted it during the elections where it was like, la- like last in health, last in education, highest poverty, uh, four more years of Repu- like, <laughs> let's get another 50 years of Republican leadership please to see if yes. i can turn it around it's like i like what are you doing like, hey, tate, and, and- Reeves, tate reeves looks like the character in like a hbo miniseries that uh has some sort of very deviant behind the scenes <laughs> bullshit like yes. like just some type of weird sexual deviant yes. shit where like like they're like the pastor but also like you know the the fucking serial killer like he just has that look to him yeah Right, he kills oh, them and then makes the dead body peg him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You're like, this dude's in some sick shit. He's also the leader of the Boy Scouts. Um, I want to get into I want to get into other stuff with you, JL, because I know we can yeah. end up talking about the election for literally hours because uh, there's so much to cover. Um, and we'll and you'll come back and we'll I'm um, throughout the year and I'm sure we will talk more about. Yeah. Cause I don't think this shit is going anywhere. I think, Mm-mm. oh man, I think we're gonna be talking about this shit all year long. Um, but uh, there are other topics to get to with you and games to play, and I want to have fun playing some games and stuff. But uh, before we do that, tell everybody one more time about uh, a half blackface and where to get it and all that stuff. Yes. Um... Obviously, I mean, you follow me on if you follow me on social media, like as many sites as possible, because like I said, Twitter is is sometimes uh, very, very difficult, but um, it's going to be available. I'll have like my newsletter goes out Tuesday morning. So obviously, if people go to my website and just sign up at the bottom, that's obviously the way it only goes out once a month about shows and like specials. But it'll be available. It's It can be pre-ordered on Vimeo and app, like Apple TV right now. And it's going to be like, I think probably on Amazon and stuff like that for pre or like for once, once the day comes on January 2nd, you'll be able to go probably to like a, like 10 or 12 different platforms and, and buy it wherever you, or rent it wherever you prefer. Um, and I'll put something on my website. And like I said, in my newsletter and on all my social media that day, there'll be, there'll be something if, if you look for it. Um, but yeah, it's, I think, uh, you know, it's a good way to start the new year. I do think having your special come out January 2nd is just one last dig because <laughs> that is a weird and not ideal yeah. day yeah. to have your think about. Like, everybody's back at work. What happened? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, the, 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 the indignities never stop, but it is, it is, uh, it's elite. It is an elite. Yeah. And, and for people who have the album and enjoyed the album, there is, I think, roughly like 30 minutes difference. So it's not going to be like, oh, one bonus bit. It's like the black yeah. serial killer bit, a bit about holy water at church, which is one yeah. of my favorites. Um, oh, and I, there's a whole bit about me being like when I was like a down and out comedian, like traveling by Amtrak and Greyhound. And meanwhile, my law professor was on House of Cards. And I was like, right. wait, what? So there's like a whole, it's, it's, it's just. And honestly, you know, at that, that thank God 
for the, the 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 months and months and months between recording the different specials. Thank God they fucked it up because that gave you the time to make 30 more minutes of new material because yeah. you had no choice because that's how much fucking time it gone by. And so it'll be for me, it'll be watching some fresh stuff as well as, you know, revisiting the classic. Mm. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, I did. I forgot to mention this. I did this and shit. This may take a second, but. Um, the Ravens are honoring Ray Rice today, um, 10 years after his career was ended because of domestic violence, caught on tape of him hitting his That's still, amazing. That's been 10 years 10 ago. years. We talked Woo! about it on the show when it happened. Uh, it's been, um, it's been 10 years. Uh, he is still with his wife. He has done nothing but, uh, redemptive work, uh, instructing and, uh, counseling men, young boys, uh, away from domestic violence, uh, talking about conflict resolution, um, uh, and not really like this broad, like pat me on the back work, just like uh, motherfucker, put your head down and go to work, mm-hmm. work. Um, and so now the Ravens, today are going to honor him as just a former player. Um, And it's very controversial to a lot of people. Um, And a lot of people that I kind of find it to be a bit hypocritical that they think this is like a thing that should never happen. Right. Um, uh, Jamel Hill is on Twitter talking about it. Uh, She's done the research. She, uh, she, She was the person that like talked with him his wife was embedded in his house for a while um and you know she is of the belief that it was a one-time incident uh caught on tape he's done nothing but work since he never got back in the nfl so i i was skeptical at first i'm not gonna lie when he first him and his wife were first talking about it and they were like it's a one-time thing i was like "Mm, the rumors are that this happens y'all fight a lot or whatever then the other thing was uh, the Ravens themselves had a press conference that I found so fucking offensive oh, where they basically blamed his wife. They were complicit mm-hmm. in it. They were they were sitting up there like, it's kind of your fault, right? And she, of course, as a, as a victim, but also like as a um, person who's relying on Ray Rice and his income, um, right. this, you know, they went and got married and all this stuff. It, they got married, like eloped. So that was another like, you're trying to fix this. You're trying to do this as fast as possible. And so the Ravens are up there blaming her. She's taking the blame. I thought it was one of the lowest moments in just NFL period for me. And with all of that stuff, they he never got back in the league. He still does that work to this day. And I think if there is any case for a person to have been redeemed from something horrible, this is the case. I'm not saying that you have to agree. I'm saying right. if you don't agree, then just say there is no case. Right. Then the other part of this that has to be acknowledged is that the league and the teams already, the this landscape of our society has already moved on from this in a way that holding Ray Rice up, honoring the work, would benefit if we would say, this is what you do. When you fuck up, this is how you get back into society by putting in work for a fucking decade. That is what you hold up. But what are we doing right now, the current climate? Von Miller gets accused of domestic violence. He hasn't missed a game. He's playing right the fuck now. So they're like, don't honor Ray Rice at halftime. They're going to be cheering for Von Miller today and writing him a check, right? That, that, uh, what's more honoring than when he gets a sack, you clap. We went to a game for the Hornets where Miles Bridges re-enters the game after his domestic violence suspension, essentially. Um, and then he's accused of domestic violence again this offseason. That suspension has – there's no suspension there. The league, the league and the team are like, we feel comfortable. With what he <laughs> said and and having him on the team right now, and we'll investigate, and when that comes back, we'll let you know. But he could not go to Canada to play a game in Toronto because Canada was like, we don't feel comfortable with this motherfucker having an open warrant or open felony, uh, I mean, 
having an uh, uh, yeah open case, warrant yeah. on him with a domestic violence case. We don't feel fucking comfortable having him in our country. So, and which is embarrassing in one that y'all didn't even fucking know that, but two, Canada has higher standards than the league and the fucking team, right? But we were at the game when he came in for the first time off the mm-hmm. bench and the crowd gave a standing ovation. Okay? So this is the current climate. The current climate is Derrick Rose's story is one of redemption because he yes. redeemed himself on the NBA court. Not because he anything he did off the court. He still did an interview last year blaming that woman uh, for, for her own sexual assault, right? The man who was in the, in the, he was giving testimony in a deposition and said he didn't understand the meaning of consent. Right. So this is the current climate. The denial of this is, is part of. Sorry, I just, I just, I interject one thing. I I hate that this happened to me, but when, when you said he denied knowing the meaning of consent, Karen's who theme music popped into my head. Like he was on the stand and they said consent and then the who music. Um, And and, and here's the thing. Um, So, so Derek Rose is redeemed on the court and we just moved on. Right. Right. He, but he's even as, as of last year, he's shown he has not had any contrition. He still thinks it's her fault that whatever happened to him. Right. Um, And then uh, another one, Rest his soul, Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant, a dude that was legitimately accused and uh had to plead out of we worship him like a god, like a hero. People posthumously moved him into their top five players of all time. We we, we put him in every commercial, murals, all this stuff, hashtag girl dad and stuff. And I'm not saying he's not a complicated figure or that he didn't do work. I think he did, but it does, but my point is fans are complicit because what we have decided is we don't want to think about the shit. It's not that it's not that it's not happening. We've decided that Von Miller's shit don't exist on Sundays. That's sacred to us. And how dare the Ravens acknowledge that this happened, that they were complicit in it for the record, that, that they honor his work, that this guy was a real player for them, that, that we all know his name even before this shit. Um, and they make us have to think. They make us have to think for a second about our complicity in it, about the complicated uh, role that 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 crime and, and and domestic violence and stuff has in in our society and our entertainment. And 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 the the outright refusal, the people who who claim to be uh, uh, prison reformists, mm-hmm. the people that claim to be police abolitionists, the people that the people that claim to be in, about restorative justice. Mm-hmm. These are the people I'm talking to because these are people that follow me and that I see all the time. The fact that you can't do it, the fact that you can't actually say there's any level of work a person could do where we go, congratulations, you're back in society. We're not congratulating the domestic violence. We're congratulating the work and the effort and the change, the real change that you showed that people are capable of because at the crux of all of this, is of all of the restorative justice talking points, there's a hypocrisy that we have not confronted in the social justice age and the social media age. We don't forgive. Right. We do not believe in forgiving. We actually admonish forgiving. We get mad when yes. someone when someone says, "Hey, I, I I'm, I'm letting this go." I, you know, when we see uh you know a Dylan Roof shoot up a church and, that, and the black people that that had people killed. Who, who are much closer to it than me are like, I, my God and my religion says, I'm letting this go. And I'm like, oh, well, well, fuck, fuck you too. That's kind of the feeling that people have. Mm-hmm. And we haven't confronted that, which is why I always say I call bullshit on that restorative justice shit. I'm not saying it's not human to feel that way. Right. I'm just saying you're not fucking high and mighty or better than me or any of this shit. And you're full of shit because this is the rubber meeting the road. This is the real test of your belief system of redemptiveness and forgiveness and, 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 and like stopping recidivism. No, we actually know factually from experts that ostracization, de- demonetizing these guys and, 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 and like uh, shunning them from society makes the domestic violence worse. It makes the, 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 the victims of it end up having getting worse results because of it. 
We don't care. It's about our moral purity and looking pure, by the way. It's about us looking pure because we're not fucking pure when we're cheering for Von Miller. We're not pure. We're not pure when we're cheering for Miles Bridges. We're not pure when we're cheering for uh, Derrick Rose and putting Kobe on murals. We're not pure. We just want to feel like we're pure because we're not thinking about that shit during those times. And Ray Rice has done the unforgivable. The Ravens have done the unforgivable. They're making us fucking think about it for a second. And no one wants to do that. We, I saw people saying, like, I don't care if, if Jamel Hill is saying this one time. It, it's it's got to be more. I can tell. And it's like, well, I, I sat with his family. I was there. I talked to them. I interviewed everybody. Keep in mind, this is in the social media age. If Ray Rice is out here hitting all kinds of women, y'all really think we no one stepped forward? Right. Zero, zero other people would have ever stepped forward and been like, yeah, he hit me too. Like Jonathan Majors had people show up to the fucking like New York uh, district attorney's office. Like if, if there were other people and he had some other thing, we, we would know probably by now. The point being, we are such huge fucking hypocrites. And I don't mind if you just pick a spot. Like, pick the spot and be like, I would never forgive this shit. I'm not, this is 100%. This banishes you from society. And I don't care if it makes me seem like a hypocrite. I just don't give a fuck. I'll be cool with that. But it's the moral inconsistency of wanting to, the greed of wanting to have it all, to watch your football and act like you're not complicit as a fan. To, 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 to watch your, to, to, to put your, 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 your Kobe's on your Mount Rushmore and act like you're not, like Ray Rice is somehow different. The difference, the thing that Ray Rice did that is truly unforgivable is change. That is what he did that fucked everything up. If he had just went and went off, put on a wife beating uh, t-shirt with stains on it and fucking was, was like doing interviews on DJ Vlad, like, <laughs> fuck, bitch, set me up, man. We'd be like, thank God. Thank God you're a piece of shit so we can just hate you forever. He did the thing that we claim to want to see people do. And we're not letting him back in to society because as much as these motherfuckers don't believe in any sort of criminal justice penalty, they believe in the social justice death penalty 100% all the time for every fucking infraction. Episode and that, title. <laughs> and that is, that is the fucking uh, crux of this thing to me. So I, I wanted to get that off my chest because sure. uh, I really I, it really bothered me to see how people talked about this. And I don't see people making any real legitimate argument other than just, I don't feel like we should acknowledge what's happening. And I'm like, so when, when Von Miller takes the field and you're cheering for him, are you not, are those not feelings too? Is that not acknowledgement too, that we don't give a fuck? This is more of a we give a fuck than any other thing that's happening with domestic violence in any sport. This is the first thing that says, actually, we give a fuck that this guy put in the work. And you would think, for you like super moralist motherfuckers, you would think you would love Ray Rice. Why? Because he should be the cudgel that you use against these other motherfuckers. Like, uh, how we just let Miles Bridges back in? He didn't acknowledge shit. He hasn't done any fucking work. He hasn't done did nothing. Uh, has changed. He's still beefing with the mother of his child. Fuck him. Ray Rice would have did blank. They don't even want to use him as that. That tells you so much about everything. As a uh, moralist motherfucker, a self-identifying moralist motherfucker who who speaks and pontificates about forgiveness to the ultimate end, so much so that I've been mocked repeatedly on this podcast. Many times, many times. But <laughs> I like when Ben Roethlisberger. I'm I'm a Steeler fan, but now just kind of like I don't even know. I I like I like want them to win, but I don't watch i don't really care anymore that's a little bit more to deal with kaepernick but when ben roethlisberger had a ben roethlisberger jersey accused of accused of sexual assault i just threw the jersey out and it wasn't even like a damn i was just like well i'm not wearing that anymore like and antonio brown like but jl jinx went very strong then antonio brown had his issues and i was like i guess i'm not wearing that one anymore um but to right. me the ray rice thing i I know I'm not supposed, like, I do feel good about that. Like, I, I, mm -hmm. because I, it, you either believe in forgiveness and people can change. And, and with Mike Vick, I thought the same thing. I never, I never judged any dog lover. Like, I got a dog. I like dogs. I would, I, I that makes me very sad to think of like how brutally these dogs are treated. But he went to prison. He lost his money. Like, 
you know, there is, there's the, what Jesus said in the Bible when somebody was taught, you know, it was one of these, like, who do you pay tax? Do you pay taxes? Even though you're like, you worship God and don't think. And he said, like, render unto Caesar what is Caesar and God what is God's. Like, there is this idea, like, he did his punishment, this earth, and then you have, you, you either believe he can be redeemed and can be a better person. I'm not even just talking in a religious way, but he can either change as a person. He did his punishment. Like, I mean, <laughs> unless you think the death penalty for dog fighting, and I know there's probably dog people yeah, who believe sure. that I'm not asking a dog person to be a Mike Vick fan, but I'm like, but I can, I can, allow, I can be okay with him getting another chance. Right. What, what he's done. And Ray Rice, he lost his career. Never, you never heard a, 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 a self-pitying word. It wasn't the righteous prick podcast. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he, he just, and it's it's and I get like you said somebody who believes it's a one strike because I used to say this when I was at the DA's office I yeah. would have women come in um, when we were doing um like um like the intake of cases where you sort of before arraignment you're talking to witnesses and a lot of domestic violence cases come in and I remember saying to several women you know do you want to press charges you try to encourage them to press charges and they said well he's a very good father and and I would say but do you think part of being a good father is setting a good example. And do you want your daughter to think it's okay for women to be hit? Would you like that to happen to her? Do you want your son to think it's okay for men to hit women? So the part of that fathering is not just paying the bills. Part of that is setting an example. And um, I would say to them, I'd say in my, in my experience, there's two types of men. There's men that don't hit women and there's men that hit women. You have a man that hits women. And only one time I didn't give that speech when it was like the woman was like bigger than the man. I think I think you two just had a fight. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> like when I think domestic violence, I think an abusive power well, relationship. Yeah, with it. But if if you're five six two oh five and he's five five one forty three and you both have black guys, I'm like, I think you just fought, <laughs> mm -hmm. and that's not okay. But I'm right. like, this I don't see a power imbalance <laughs> here. You know, if anything, I think you're stronger. But but for the most part, it was that you have to kind of because these people are usually people who are in those things are coming from a cycle. They, yep. they it, it often did not start with them. And like I remember, I kicked a girl in fourth grade in gym class, and my dad, like, it's as mad as he's ever been at me because it mm -hmm. was like that was one of those never, never. I heard my parents cursing and yelling in each other's faces my whole life. Never put a fuck, never came close to putting a hand on my mom. It's just not, you know, and I think there's, you live in one of those two worlds. And I think with Ray Rice, it's like, I mean, you said it all. It's, it's a, you either don't think there's a way to come back or, right. or this is a good story. Like it's, it's not in the middle. It's either. And, and, for, the, and, 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 and for the record, the don't think there's a way back is bullshit. Because Deshaun Watson is in the NFL oh. now. So, like, it's a denial of reality. To be, like, yeah. this is a culture-changing... This could be a, a, a culture-changing moment, right? Of, like, hey, this is the work. This is what we honor. But, no, we do honor Ben Roethlisberger last year. We do honor... We do give Deshaun Watson the most guaranteed money of all time. So, like, the denial of what is actually happening is part of why I think the fans are complicit because they're like, no, no, keep him away from the game, okay? <laughs> no, I don't want to hear that bullshit. We got a zero tolerance policy. And, uh, oh, Deshaun Watson just doing a touchdown. Oh, shit, here we go. Let's go Browns. You know, like, I – the. And the culture can't trust, can't trust these females anyway. <laughs> right. The culture <laughs> And the culture needs to change, but – we are denying what the culture is. You can't change culture that you're denying what it is. It's bitch, bitch, give me a massage. Was a, was on shirts and posters at Browns games. Yes, it was. It, when Ray Rice hit Janae Rice during that season, when people wanted him to come back, women were showing up with Ray Rice jerseys and and making fun of the idea that this woman got punched. Stephen A. Smith ends up getting suspended off the show that year for a couple of days because he was on there talking about how a woman shouldn't be trying to fight a man and his si if his sister got here, he would say this, that, and that. So this is the real culture. What, well, what rallies, they had shirts in 2016, he can grab my pussy. 
Right. right. What we do by not acknowledging Ray Rice or honoring him or whatever you want, we what we do is is say head in the sand. This is not happening. We stay in denial. Ray Rice is the unforgivable thing is that we must acknowledge that it happened, that we are complicit, that he put in the work, and that this is part of the equation. And I think that is a, a huge thing. Like I said, I didn't I didn't mean to get us so sidetracked on that, not, but I just needed to say that because today it'll be relevant, but tomorrow it won't. Not a problem. And also uh, something else I wanted to add too. Uh, and and it's almost like a piggyback on what you're saying. I feel it's though, because some I seen some people in the chat room was talking about the video. Like a lot of people can't forgive because they've seen the video. Yeah, that's a but, huge part of it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, 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 and I, I get that and I understand that. My thing is, you're asking, and I will this put like this: if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm standing ten toes down in this. You are asking a job and jobs to do the job of the police. That's what you're asking them and you're demanding them to do. And you want them to do it in games. That's that's the fans, quote unquote, justice. Games, suspensions, out the league, it's done, case closed, move on. Football time, basketball time, whatever it is, you, you want it clean and you want it swift. But that's not reality. And the reality is the society itself doesn't know how to handle this. Police departments don't know how to handle this. We as people don't know how to handle this. You have people that are alive and people that are underneath the sound of my voice. They're seeing people get their asses whipped in real life. And my thing is this. You know what? A lot of times, a lot of them have forgave them. <laughs> some of these people have changed. Some of these people have redeemed themselves. And some of these people have been accepted back in reality. I mean, I mean in society. But the difference is these people aren't famous. And because these people aren't famous... All of a sudden, that part is separate from the quote unquote what I see on TV, the celebrity part. It's like, no, if you reach celebrity, whatever the status is, it's the death penalty. Well, I seen it. Well, dog, you seen your mama get her ass whooped too, but you found a yeah, way. Yeah, the sports leagues actually have a much lower rate of criminal infractions than society. But also, I just want to throw out there real quick too that, um, the I and this is just a part of it. You can't separate the money, the fame, and race from these discussions about why sports people, uh, athletes should pay a much higher social and criminal penalty than your average Joe. B because a lot of people already kind of watch sports with a bit of envy in their heart. Correct. So when someone it's 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 the MAGA uh, UFC guy going. How dare LeBron James not be grateful that America gave him this? And you're like, Le what, what, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, LeBron James earned that money being great, and, mm -hmm. and and that's all it is to it. And right. America's not doing him a favor. Mm -hmm. Whatever he makes for himself, he's making ten times that for the NBA. That's just the way it works. But but there's the envy and the race that comes into it. And then the last thing is, um, if we're talking about as you brought up, people looking for the league to step in where the criminal justice system does it, which uh, I do understand the impetus of that. Mm -hmm. But if that's what you're looking for, Ray Rice, time served. Right. Never played another game. It's been 10 years. It's He's never getting back on the field. That's not even a motivation. So at this point, it's, it's, it's like I said, it's about the hypocrisy of those of the people because these are things that we claimed were the thing we wanted. You got the thing you wanted. The right, he 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 submitted to the ultimate moral judgment and said, Y'all are right. I am going to do everything you said, and I'm gonna do it much longer than it than it quote unquote benefits me in the way that you would claim to benefit me. I will never be on the field again, I'll never be in an advertising and make money. And the fact that the Ravens would even acknowledge it is, is, is the it, real problem and that, that says so much agree that's that's the real problem because how dare you make me think how dare you bring up quote-unquote old shit how dare you know people change you know and 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 and, and i think a lot of that anger too for people that that, that kind of are, are in this bubble it's they're looking at it going how dare you take the power away from me to judge now how dare you take the power away from me to 
keep throwing this and keep you stuck. How dare right. you take that power away from me? So now this quote unquote, this moral, this high ground that I'm standing on, I got, I have to acknowledge now that there's a change and I have to acknowledge now that I need to step down and I need to let it go and I need to do the internal work and that there's something wrong within me. And just for the record, this is not really a recrimination of people that feel upset about it. It's just, I'm just saying, can y'all just admit that that there's nothing ever for anyone? Just right. admit that. And we could all move yeah. on. And, then, and that you're already complicit in your Kobe Bryant love and your you know, Deshaun Watson love or your Miles Bridges love or your watching of these games where they're at least honored and participating in, they are honored. So don't, don't like, don't give me that Von Miller is not being honored. He's honored every week. So just like, just admit that you don't really want to think about it. Don't, Correct. don't try to act like you're morally better. This is not morally better. This is actually pretty low <laughs> as, as I'm concerned. Who was, who was the Houston Rocket? Like the young, Kevin, like, uh, yeah, uh, was it Kevin Porter Jr.? Yeah, and I, so whatever what he must have done, you know, when you see how things are treated, I mean, what, he like did he like almost choke a woman to death or yeah, something? Like yeah, because he, he's he, gone, he, like he was just like. Here's, here's what's interesting about Kevin Porter Jr. JL. They didn't cut him; they traded him. <laughs> then he was cut from the team he went to in Oklahoma City which I believe has Josh Giddy on the roster right now. Um, but what I found Euphoria, interesting... Euphoria star Josh Giddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What, what I found interesting about that situation is that the league got some sort of like kudos of handling it well. And I was like, no, two teams found a way to profit off of that before they got him. Like, like it, he wasn't really out there. Josh Primo from the Spurs is playing for the Clippers right now. He was flashing his dick and harassing uh, one of the physical trainers in the spur in uh, San Antonio. So, like this idea that like Ray Rice is the one who's a, right. uh, beyond the pale is just ridiculous. All right, now let's try to play a couple games because, like I said, I, I kind of went on the thing. Um, all right, uh, let's do a little bit of uh, fucking with black people. Okay. All right, I got one of those for us. Uh, let me pull out the fucking with black people music. Why am I having? Oh, there we go. 25, 50, 75, 100, how much is you fucked with? How much is you fucked with? Death by a thousand cuts, microaggressions, gaslighting, dog whistles, manic depression. Work twice as hard no matter how high the bar is. I give it a hundred, not fucking Dracarys. 25, 50, 75, 100, how much is you fucked with? How much is you fucked with? Am I ever... Uh, ever pursuing them my goal of making everybody feel kind of like a hypocritical piece of shit. This next ah! fucking with black people goes directly against all the sanctimony that y'all felt about violence against women. Okay. Man filmed wielding folding chair in Alabama Riverfront brawl avoids jail time. Now, if you guys remember, ah! he was beating people with that folding chair. And yes! He, and there was one white lady who had already fallen to the ground, yeah, was not a threat, the water. Yes. and he fucking kabonged her. To, right, he was like, like kaboom! Like that cartoon dog with the guitar. He hit this woman so hard, I went. I went, oh my, <laughs> oh my god, that, that guy went too far. And then everybody was like, no, he didn't. White people are racist and they need to get beat up. And I was like, oh, man, that... Y'all ain't feel a little different about the woman on the ground? Nothing? Okay, maybe it's my southern chivalry. I don't know. Right. Well, he will not serve time behind bars if he can stay out of trouble. He pled guilty, um, but he won't go to jail. Instead, he must complete 50 hours of community service, pay $357 for court costs, and avoid trouble for 90 days to stay out of jail. Um, and so, his folding chair yeah, license I, has been revoked. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> He will be honored at halftime of the Cleveland folding chair. Uh, according to reports, Edgy, it's restraining order. He cannot be within a hundred feet of any folding chairs. Yeah, he got to sit. He got <laughs> yeah. He got to sit in regular chairs and pews and benches. Right. Um. So, uh, according to reports, his lawyer launched a GoFundMe after he was charged with disorderly conduct. So far, nearly three hundred thousand dollars has been raised for his medical bills lost wages and other expenses. So he actually can't, he, he made money off this. He, he has to pay $357, but he made roughly 30 G's. So it's actually kind of a come up for him for beating the people with the chair. 
<laughs> so how much you feel fuck with intervals of 25, Karen? Zero to 100. Well, call me Bojangles because these are zero for me. Do, 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 do. All right. All right. Just, jail, jail. Uh, zero. I don't think this is uh, a fucked with. Uh, I think you just wanted to share this story. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, 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 I have to present the game as it's played, right? I'm if not, you, if you ask me... Uh, White people or former prosecutors, how fucked up do you feel? I might say 25. <laughs> okay. I just, was your biracial? I didn't oh, know if that yes, was going to okay. come into play. Okay, so we got two scores. I get it. I get it. You know, I don't know if you're going to be like, uh, a black man and a white woman fighting. This reminds me of childhood. 100% fuck with. I don't know what was going to happen. I, I just had, all I do is put the game out there. I can't anticipate the answers. Uh, I don't, I don't feel fucked with either by this story. Um, but mostly just because of the general tenor of that conflict. I, mm -hmm. I don't think it's possible for me to, um, I don't think it's possible. I, they could have probably shot people. And I feel up here like, well, then white people should have left him alone. Just park your boat. Where the fuck you supposed to park it? Like, I, I, I would have been such a fucking asshole about it. When, when Bobby Knight passed away, like, months after that, I, in my head, I wish I had thought of it during the thing. Like a meme would have been perfect if like the white people have recruited like their yes. folding chair Thanos, yes. uh, Bobby Knight. Like, <laughs> like yes. that would be a funny yes. sketch for yes. a yes. sketch yes. show. Like, yes. 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 Five folding chairs in it. Yes. 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 yes, I would have loved that. That would be so good. Oh my God. All right, let's do one more. Inmate accused of stabbing Derek Chauvin, I mean Derek Chauvin, uh, says the attack <laughs> says the attack was a symbolic gesture for the Black Lives Matter movement. Now, this man's name is John Turks Herscott. He's a former member of the Mexican Mafia. Oh shit! So this is not a black man that did You're this stuff. A whole nother group of people. That sounds this like some of ally. those prison truces where it's like if you want if you want protection or if you want an alliance, here's what you have to do. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Now he did this. Uh, he stabbed Chauvin 22 times. Ooh. While they were both incarcerated at the Tucson Federal Prison, prosecutors claim that he stated he would have fatally harmed Chauvin had correction officers not intervened swiftly. Terskat is currently facing charges of attempted murder. 22 so times. How quick was he? How swift? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'm about to say, goddamn, 22 times. Karen never watched Oz, y'all. Don't I'm worry. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Terskak is currently facing charges of attempted murder, assault with the intent to commit deadly uh, murder, assault with a dangerous weapon, assault resulting in bodily injury, currently serving a 30-year sentence for crimes he committed while functioning as an FBI informant, uh, revealed that he had contemplated stabbing a former officer convicted of causing the death of George Floyd. According to the criminal complaint, he attacked Chauvin uh, with an improvised knife, aka Shank, with the intention of inflicting bodily harm, committing murder. Additionally, he informed investigators that he selected Black Friday, the day following Thanksgiving, as a day for the attack because it held sy symbolic significance for both the Black Lives Matter movement and the Black Hand symbol associated with the Mexican Mafia criminal organization. Seventy five percent off your internal organs. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Buy one get one stab free. What's right, happening here? Right. Black Friday. And also, I just love that he thinks Black Friday has a significance to black people. Like that. <laughs> well, that's how black. That's it's 50. just an American. That's a fifty. If the question is that, that's a fifty because that is like how. Right. Yeah. That's an insulting level of ignorance. Right. He couldn't have said African American Friday. He had to say Black Friday. Uh, but the yeah. So um, that is his. Um, that is so how much you feel. Fuck with zero to hundred, Karen. I'm giving this a uh, 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 twenty five just because he thought Black Friday was the day Black people celebrated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, versus just a a, a, a day of sales mm -hmm. and discounts. All right, Jail. I'm going to agree with Karen uh, there, the 25 for, for the Black Friday. But I will say, I ha I feel like I still have to say, I hate prison justice. I'm sorry. I There is no love for Derek Chauvin. Uh, and I say it like Chauvin because, you know, during 2020, people yeah. going like, I love JL Chauvin. I'm like, please, that my ticket sales suck. <laughs> like, 
I don't uh, need. Hey, wait, the Pittsburgh Improv book Derek Chauvin. What a piece of shit venue. No, 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 no. Come see. I'm funny. It's Come nice. see him. It's, it's Black Friday. They misspelled it. Leave off the H for homicide. But the, the like, so Derek Chauvin is a piece of shit. He's a yeah. piece of shit. He was a piece of shit before George Floyd. Like, he had, a, like, he's a, right. he is bad. Right. But. I never, I'm so, like, and I know some people enjoy it or like it or feel it's justice. I hate prison justice. I like, we have a justice system and, uh, or an injustice system. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. Cornell. Brother, brother, brother JL. All right. All right. Now we have a justice system, but we also have Justice Winslow, who plays for the NBA. We got to remember Ain't that, good brother, Justice Winslow. <laughs> um, but I, I think... Like, I just don't like that, but I'd give it 25 for the Black Friday. I don't want to give it for like, you know what? I, Derek Chauvin deserves another chance. Like, not that. But I never, I'm always like bad people doing bad things to bad people when they're supposed to be in kind of, you know, and it yeah. tells you if the if the corrections officers who are definitely half of them like Derek Chauvin, you're, you know, we'll get you extra snacks. Yeah, uh, exactly. Later. If they couldn't get to them, then that speaks to the, the general yeah. treachery and lack yeah. of safety in it's kind of like prison. it's kind of like the death penalty where I'm for the death penalty, but then it, there's no way to no pun intended to execute the death penalty where innocent people don't get killed. So right. it's like, do you want to live in a world where zero innocent people get killed by the death penalties because we don't have one, or do you want to live in a world where Dylan Roof gets killed, but then there's like a story on a podcast is like these black guys uh, were accused of some bullshit, didn't do it, and they did now. So uh, they were exonerated posthumously, and you're like, ooh, that that doesn't feel good. Um, right. And that's prison justice too, because like for every Derek Chauvin, it's just some motherfucker that got shanked because they didn't pass the pudding or whatever. And it's like that. <laughs> I, does that feel good too? For some reason, in church this morning, I thought of a. I think jokes run into my head no matter no matter what time of day, and. I, I realized I think I have to write this down where I was like, I just I could make a joke where I'm like, I got a law degree just so if I went to prison, I'd be like, don't don't rape me. I'm the prison lawyer. I'll yeah. be, I'll be <laughs> your legal work. Protect I me. Take, I, right. I, 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 I get you out of here. I get you out of here. Listen, listen, stick with me. I'll get you out of here in a year. You'll be getting real pussy. I, okay. I, I can tell you what books you need. And I would definitely do a thing where it's like if I had two years, I'd be like, wow, this uh this is a complicated appeal. This is gonna take at least three years, but I'm yeah, on exactly. it. And then, yeah, like, yeah. just sneaking out the day, right. like, you go, uh, catch you later, maybe, maybe right. next time. <laughs> right. Wait, I heard your sentence is two, two years and three months. Uh, no, no, no. I'm, Fake news. Well, um, uh, <laughs> John, the, the, I, I give it a, I give it a, 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 a twenty five as well. But yeah, mostly because of the Black Friday faux pas. But I appreciate his allyship. And a uh, rumor is John Bernthal is playing him in the uh, movie. <laughs> Uh, directed by Ava DuVernay, so he'll be playing uh, the Mexican who shanks uh, Derek. Hey, essay, essay, you did it so man, eh? You to come here, Cabron. Hey, Cabron, come here. <laughs> Wait, how did he get a machine gun into prison? <laughs> I got half off for you right now. All right, all right. Last thing, guys, let's do a little guess the race. Um, you know, we've been very high minded, high minded and high and mighty, but we still do practice racism here. And so we, we got to get to that. It's time to get the race. 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 All right, guess the race, go around the globe, find different articles, guess the race of the people involved. JL Covan's playing, Karen's playing, chat room's playing, everybody's racist. Here we go. A cop accused of masturbating in a patrol car as his racy content page has been discovered. Oh! A county deputy in the U.S. has been arraigned after alleged incidents of exposing himself and committing sex acts, including masturbating in a patrol car. Yum Hill... Yam Hill, Y A M H I L County. So Yam Hill, he's throwing them yams out there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Deputy David Richard Mills has been hit with 12 charges relating to allegations of creating pornography while in uniform. 
Incidents between 2022 and 2023 were shared in court documents that have led to the charges of official misconduct, public indecency, disorderly conduct, and abuse of venerated objects. What was using a nightstick or what was he was doing from Washington, D.C.? Because they like, what was it, thick cops? Yes, they do mm-hmm. like thick. They do they, like they them do, thick. They, they like them thick. Uh, it was also alleged Mills 36 allegedly posted indecent photos and videos to both Twitter and OnlyFans. The allegations include masturbating in his patrol car and posting the video online. He allegedly masturbated into a water bottle of another person with the intent of the person drinking it. He's also accused of sharing that video online for financial benefit January 5th, 2022. He allegedly posted a picture with his penis exposed while in uniform April 2nd, 2023. He is alleged to have exposed his penis in the sheriff's office August 6, 2023. <gasps> yeah, next he's going to be fucking in the halls of uh, Congress. Halls of justice. <laughs> his, 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 his OnlyFans account is Nightstick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is nice dick. It's not, it's not, <laughs> uh, Mills was, uh, was taken into custody and processed in the Yam Hill County Courthouse. According to his release agreement, the, the judge released him on condition that he is not allowed to be seen publicly, including online, wearing any law enforcement insignia. So he just got to go back to normal clothes. That's his punishment. Um, and the district attorney said, we understand the community has a high level of expectation for the professionalism of those who work in public safety. When there is a breach in, in that professionalism, we take that very seriously. Uh, the, uh, the sheriff's office confirmed that he has been placed on leave. Karen, guess the race of Mr. Uh, what is his first name? Uh, Deputy David Richard Mills. Oh, white. That town is in bumblefuck nowhere, white. Okay, all right. What about you, Joe? Uh, you know, it's funny. When I was in Cleveland one time for a week doing shows there, I remember there were two different instances of walking across this big bridge back to my hotel. And one day it was a white guy walking with his dick out of his pants. And then the next day, I'm not even kidding. It was a black dude masturbating at the top of the bridge. And so I feel like much like in my life experience, I've seen um, white and black uh, take Mm -hmm. part in this bizarre Mm -hmm. uh, behavior. Ah! Um, But I would, I mean, it's, I want to get tricked here. I'm going to go white, but I, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm like 80% sure it's white. So I'm going to say, I wonder, what would, I wonder what would have happened if the white dude and black dude had seen each other on the same day. Like it's sad. Yeah. It's sad that it was a day apart. Like, like they could be fucking soulmates or some or best friends or like, or is it like a Highlander situation? It's like, what the fuck? No, I think John legend and common saw that. And that's when they wrote, <laughs> Glory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Glory hole. Oh, uh, all right. Instead of the Edmund Pettus Bridge, it was the Edmund Penis Bridge in Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, who, no. who let the hogs out? Um, <laughs> that works too well. And then the and then I did a bit on that that got a lot of laughs, but then the, the manager told me he got complaints from some people after when and I was like, but it happened. Yeah. Like this wasn't me just like I want to talk about dicks. I was like, this happened. Half a mile from this club but, twice but this week. Did, That's what worth talking know, about. What jail didn't know is those two people were that complained were the, the guys. They were <laughs> they, they, they had they had tickets to the show. They came to the show and it was like this motherfucker. What? We thought this was gonna be a sex positive comedy show. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even I pull, I'm giving him a show. Wow. Um <laughs> all right, knowing where Jam Hill County is, trust that is white. Peter Piper picked his penis white. Officer Cuck White, three names white, beat that white meat, definitely white. Yams, black, says Ariel. <laughs> He's just like, the county got yams in it. Um, and the other, other white meat, the correct answer is, and uh, most of you said the same thing, it is white. One person did miss it. Got to give you your boobs. And per your discussion, I think last week about the teachers, and I was I was going to write in, and then you said it like in the, where you were like, I think these teachers are leaking it themselves. This feels more crazy though. Like right. this doesn't feel like a dude who's like 
because cops like being cops. They like the power. They like like you don't want to jeopardize that like mm. for for frivolous shit. Whereas a teacher can be like, well, I'm hot and I'm a freak and this salary right. stinks. So I'll right. promote I'll promote by getting he's, canceled. He's it's, also it's the, no, it's the no only fans it's, version of getting canceled. Like by a right wing yes. comedian loves getting canceled secretly. That the only fans technique. Is like oh. I'm a teacher and they fired me, so I guess no I just have to make a million guy, going no, no offense to this guy, right? No, because but it's almost no way he cannot take offense. He's not nearly hot enough Mm-mm. to do that. Like like for this to have been a plan, because whenever we cover those articles with the women that oh they found my OnlyFans, the pictures are fucking smoking hot. They're like photo mm-hmm. shoots. Yes. They're fucking like you know they like make up up. It, like it's so clear. <laughs> That they were like, no, this is how I'm going to be making my living. This is not a, like, it's never like a, a picture from the news where they're like half covering their face, leaving the school. Like, oh God, no, they yes. discovered, it's always like titties. So uh, yeah, man, I'm very uh, offended that y'all would uh, go to my OnlyFans page, white mama teacher uh, 75. Uh, I think that's horrible that you uh, that you guys are doing that. It's very <laughs> disgusting <laughs> that, you, that you hypocrites are jacking off to me. You're like, <laughs> All right. I know a fucking rollout when I see one. Right. All right. <clears throat> Let's go to the next one, guys. Um, I, I don't I don't think we covered this, but I don't remember if I'm being honest. So if I get halfway through this and we covered this already, we'll Y'all let it. me know because y'all know I'm not going to remember. A man, 32 years old, was busted for allegedly poultry pelting at Wawa store. Claiming that his food order was not properly cooked, an aggrieved customer struck a Wawa worker with a piece of chicken covered in spicy Nashville sauce that got into the victim's eye. It was uh, one... Wasted twi- food! Yeah, yeah. My man, Chris Lambert's gonna be very upset. You know, Wawa's his shit. That's his jam. I've never been. One day I'm walking to a Wawa's. Uh, I think we have been. We went to Pennsylvania. I think we did. Okay. Um, that It was 1.20 a.m. when this confrontation happened at this convenience store in St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, resulted in the arrest of Daniel. Ooh, I'll be on St. Petersburg. Good plug. I'll be down there in February <laughs> for some shows. <laughs> yeah. Bring your chicken. <laughs> uh, uh, Florida resulted in the arrest of Daniel Palomino, 32, on a misdemeanor battery charge. Police say he became upset because he believed the chicken was not cooked completely. He then confronted the worker and responded by throwing the chicken on the victim. When the chicken was covered, while the chicken was covered in spicy Nashville sauce that got into the victim's eye, the Wawa employee did not suffer bodily harm. Palomino, who lives about a mile from the Wawa, was under the influence of alcohol when confronted by sheriff's deputies. He was booked in the county jail, from which he was released Sunday afternoon upon posting a $500 bond. The chicken was not seized as evidence, though police did confiscate a baseball bat from him. His rap sheet includes convictions for cocaine possession, aggravated assault, theft, possession of drug paraphernalia, criminal mischief, marijuana possession, and a probation violation. Guess the race of Daniel Palomino. Karen. Going Latino? Karen's going Latino. JL. I have to act out my, my choice. So I come to a Wawa. Looking for some chicken. You give me a sun cooked chicken. I know what my mom would have done if she'd give me a chicken. No, but I bet if I was Indian, I was a black or African, excuse me, African American, right? If I was like one of you people, you would be like, oh, let me do the chicken for you real nice, sir. But I come in here and you act like I'm nothing. Hey, take this chicken right in your face, okay? Let me go get my baseball bat and do some more coke. Okay? <laughs> No, I may be wrong, but that's um, that's my that's my guess. Let's see the, chat, the chat room says why do white passing Latinos suspect that a nigga would wouldn't waste chicken? Oh, I'm suspect that a nigga would waste chicken. Must be black listing all of his crimes. Complaining is not cooked all the way. Yeah, that's us black. No nigga wasting chicken, alabaster cockdacity. Italian likes his chicken fried hard black and Italian. All right. Karen said black. JL said white, uh mm-hmm. Italian specific. Mm-hmm. I mean, Karen said. Latina. Mm. Sorry. Correct answer is white. So, JL, you got it. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, Karen and many others, you missed it. Oh, but he's, he's much trashy. Like, in my mind, he was like goatee, yes, but like black right. hair. 
Right. So he's just, he's just, he's like not, Northern Italy. He's not like, a, yeah. hey, hey, hey. he's giving like Sawyer from Lost or some shit. Yeah. Like he's not, he's a different type of white. You're right. That last <laughs> name threw me off. Palomino. Yeah. I don't, listen, I wouldn't have got it. Either. That's how I said I Latino. Know. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Time to go to the bonus round where everything is worth triple the points and triple the racism. So it's still anyone's game. Um, where's my triple the points music? Uh, what the fuck did I do with that? Oh, well, here we go. Uh, wait, no, that's not it. What the fuck? Uh, oh, here it is. It's found it. Triple the points. Triple the points. Triple the points. Triple the points. Trip, triple the race. Triple the points. Triple the points. Triple the points, trip, triple the race. All right. Anyone's game here between JL and Karen. Pastor tried to deep fry McDonald's cook. Latoya oh. Gladney, a 44 year old manager, we're not guessing her race. Okay. A 44 year old manager in training at McDonald's in North Carolina told police that her employees were disrespecting her last night. So she called her husband to assist her. Investigators alleged the police. I guess it's the police. <laughs> Investigators <laughs> alleged that Dwayne Wadden, a 57-year-old church pastor, subsequently arrived at the restaurant at High Point. He chose not to turn the other cheek. Ah! ah baptize Wadden, you in the baptize you in the oils of fries. Right. <laughs> He's, he's like, I, I got some oils I'm going to anoint y'all with. It's right. hot grease. Uh, cops say Wadden walked into the kitchen and began punching Theodore Garlington at a McDonald's cook in the face. Now, we're guessing the race of the pastor, not the employee. Mm -hmm. um, Wadden also, do you think when he walked in, he was like, the, the path of the righteous man is beset <laughs> with, with the inequities. Uh, anyway. Um, Wadden also allegedly wrapped his hands around Garlington's neck and began pushing his head toward the deep fryer. Before Garlington, 34, could be dipped in the hot oil, several employees interceded. Garlington suffered a large contusion to the forehead and right eye, along with scratches on his neck. While EMS workers responded to the scene, Garlington chose to have relatives transport him to the hospital. Well, yeah, it's cheaper than the ambulance. After half point, uh, police department officers interviewed witnesses and reviewed the store security footage. Wadden was arrested for assault. Bond was set at $1,000 and a January 22nd misdemeanor trial was scheduled for Wadden. According to his Facebook page, Wadden works as a semi-truck driver and a pastor at Elevated Life International Ministries, which re recently celebrated his second anniversary. His church slogan, where hope starts and life begins, uh, <laughs> his church is operated from a storefront space next to Bueno Burrito in Thomasville. It is unclear what effect last night's melee will have on his managerial on uh, Gladly, his wife's managerial aspirations at McDonald's. Uh, guess the race of Mr. Dwayne or Pastor Pastor Dwayne Wadden. Black and yeah, if I was this company, you wouldn't have a job because you should have called the police mm. district. Man, like, why are you calling your spouse to handle a situation like this? Uh, well, she technically is managing it, Karen. Uh, <laughs> I feel Bishop like this. TD breaks your face. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's yeah, what's the what? So, Karen, you said black, is yes. that what you said? All right, JL, come in now. Once again, I'm sorry, I have to give a little bit of analysis here. Given our talk about John Bernthal in cast origin, this would be the way a pastor John Bernthal yeah, would absolutely. come in hot to defend his, what I'm <laughs> assuming is black wife. Like he's going to go <laughs> yes. extra to prove that like you don't do this. He calls his right. wife his black wife. He goes, you don't do this yeah. to my black wife, <laughs> right. my queen. Right. Um, it's it, it says everything about this is like, oh, yeah, it's a black guy. But I'm going to go, given how we've talked this episode and the burn, I'm going to take a big risk um, mm. and say, and also this sounds like an attempted murder. Like if you were trying to put his head in a right. deep, like an active deep fryer, you were trying to kill him. Right. Um, and a pastor only like to me this is white pastor kind of stuff like mm -hmm. like the creepy maga type like storefront like a storefront white preacher 
sounds right. much creepier to me than a, a Latin or a black storefront preacher. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a big risk and I'm going to potentially lose the game. I'm mm. saying white. So this will determine a winner one way or the other uh, because y'all have chose different answers mm -hmm. and one of you will be correct. Uh, international Ministries. Da, da, da. Okay. McNegra. <laughs> McNegra. Oh, no. Uh, I baptize you in the name of Chicken Nugget Grease. This is a nigga. Bishop TD breaks your face black. Lord, the whole McNegra thing. is my race. <laughs> <laughs> that is. <laughs> that is. <laughs> or maybe it's a Mac Negra. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, uh, uh, Lord, whole thing is is was black coat. Blue Docs noted uh, a nigga moment. Uh, how you try to fry a motherfucker? Okay, it's not race. Used to pat call him pass. Now they call him fry man black. <laughs> A uh, colorful long name for a storefront church, Grifton Black Pastor. <laughs> what? Uh, only a thousand dollars bond. I'm gonna go with white. That that is a kind of a low bond. That's true. Well, the correct answer is one of you got it right, one of you got it wrong. This determines the winner, and the winner is Karen. You got it right. Congratulations. Swing big. I, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I want to, I want a home I, run I, or a strikeout. Yeah, I thought <laughs> you was going to say John Borenthal was ready to pass. I was about to say, what? Listen, JL Covan is just the character from Ten Cup. Okay. <laughs> he just, he, he had to go for it. He fucking had to go for it. Uh, but he, I got a boom. But this Man. picture of this pastor is epic. That is a death row records pastor. <laughs> like what? <laughs> he looked like he'll throw he just got signed in by Suge Knight. <laughs> on the contract, you going into Greece? Okay. <laughs> oh, no. oh, oh, like he my. looks like he looks like his street name is Pastor. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like, like you don't know his real name. You're like, hey, Pastor, looking for you, man. You say you got that money because if you ain't got the tides, I, I'd get the hell out of this spot right now before you get over here. All right. Well, we had so much fun. Last thing is sore ratchetness. A Cheyenne woman is accused of threatening a man with a cane sword. She's been charged with aggravated assault. Oh, no. Uh, Cheyenne, Wyoming, a 33-year-old transient woman in Cheyenne is facing a felony assault charge as police suspect she threatened a man with a blade hidden in her cane. Cheyenne police have charged Cassandra D. Herman, I don't see a picture, don't know what she looks like, with aggravated assault with a weapon and misdemeanor interference with a peace officer without injury after they were called to the address at Monday, Monday, September 18th. Police responded to a 9.15 a.m. report. Man, it's so early. early. Damn. Um, uh, of, of a suspicious circumstance. According to a booking sheet, the arriving officer encountered Herman out, outside the home where she appeared very fr flustered and aggravated. The officer noted that she was walking around with a black cane in her hands. The officer reported that Herman would walk away when asked about the situation. A man in the home told police that Herman had a hidden knife in the cane and that she had threatened him several times with it in the home. He said she had been staying at home for about two days when he woke up, up to her freaking out about people's guts on a fishing line. <laughs> what? Yes, that's intense. Uh, during an ensuing argument, she pulled the sword on the man, cornered him, and threatened him from about a foot away. Outside, Herman continued walking away from, from the, office, the officer despite multiple warnings. So the officer used a stun gun, which allowed him to handcuff her while she was laying on the ground. Uh, she was taken to the Laramie County Detention Center without further incident. All right. Uh, all right, JL. Man, listen, you're one of my favorite people. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. you coming on. You know, the door's no, always open. It is. I, I know you never abuse the privilege. You always come on when you got something to promote. But, you know, if you ever just want to come on and talk bullshit with us, you know, the you door's can. always here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, as podcast. As far as I know, I don't know if I'll have anything to promote ever again. So, yeah. so <laughs> don't, don't, listen, don't let quitting comedy keep you from being a, a, a staple of the show. <laughs> 
All yeah. right. <laughs> Even if you say tomorrow, that's it. You can still come on the show. You can still you know come on and hang out and be funny with us. Okay. Mm -hmm. We appreciate you. It wasn't our fault. You were one of the reasons my career survived. It's your yeah. it is your fault. It's your fault. I'm still doing it. <laughs> yeah, it's more of a yeah, it's more of yeah. a uh, like when we get shot by the spree shooter, it's like, oh yeah, that's fucked up. They they love that guy, but he his manifesto said <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, me and Roger going down on the on the SS Titanic JL. Yeah. Uh <laughs> check out look, check out Rain on Your Parade, guys. Um, very funny, very good podcast. Um, it is it, it always inspires me to think about stuff and uh and it's and, and it's also just very funny. The characters, the 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 bits, the mm -hmm. uh the recurring punch down of the week. I look forward to punch down a week <laughs> every time. Um so make sure y'all. <laughs> Check it out, and, um, and, and don't be no low value fans, y'all. Yeah, and you can, and don't forget the Patreon. Uh, I, I we didn't even talk making podcasts great again. What that's gonna be like in the year where the existential crisis of Trump is still hanging <laughs> over right. our heads, like. Well, so I have I've told Jay finally that this is it. Like 2024, yeah. I win, lose, whatever. I, you're lucky if I make it to the election. Yeah. Um, with this, but it's done. It's done because either it's like I'm bored of it. I mean, I try to make it funny. Like when I do yeah. it, I do it. But it's still I don't funny. Really, yeah. I, look, I mean, I hate to, I hate to, uh, to encourage, but uh, the, the, the fucking Baron Trump. Thank uh, you. Yes, uh, I was very. <laughs> <laughs> Just to tell people, like, because it's kind of a mix. It's like some yeah. of it was Patreon. Like it started on Patreon, yeah. so you kind of. It's like my version of Disney Plus and theater movies. Like you have to yeah. have the whole piece. But basically, Baron Trump, yeah. how I envisioned him, was a guy, a kid who's being homeschooled, living in a crate, who never has any other conversations but with his mother. So he has like a thick Eastern European accent. And over the years, he's going through puberty. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's one of my favorite things because I kind of created this whole fictional world around Baron Trump. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's the honest to God, man. It is the um the amount of thought and craft that goes into it. That just I mean, because that everything you're saying is stuff I was just thinking, like, God, man, the, the diabolical menace that is your mind of because all those things, like if someone else would have just done a Baron Trump, it would have just been like, oh, uh, maybe a kid who'll grow up to be an asshole. Maybe you know, he's still a kid, so we don't want to vilify him too much. But like how the character really becomes about his piece of shit parents and uh, and the likelihood that they're fucking him up and how they don't right. really they don't really love him or care about him and all of that stuff because we can't even imagine Trump loving a child and caring like that like it's so much thought and craft the accent everything you you just kind of <laughs> explain it comes across so clearly as you listen to it. And right. yet it's still so funny. The one I listened to was the uh, Christmas gifts right. episode. And it just I, I got to admit, I listened to that back. I don't listen to a lot. I, and I was laughing. Yes. And in my head, I was like, all right, I kind of like, this is this is like a like, funny and just, alternate and world. I'm, and I'm imagining that it is much like the Trump. It's a lot of improv and a lot of off the top of well, your head. Me, it's all improv. It's, so it's I Jay. Just, when, when I, yeah. So I just want to say it's Jay Jay Nog is presenting a list of the best gifts to give a kid, and then it's Baron Trump JL giving you what Baron Trump would think about the gifts and just the zags in, instead of zigs, the just the ways that it was just like where you're like, oh yeah, he this is a cool gift that that maybe and then Jay will find a way to be like. No, this I wouldn't want the Game Boy or whatever, this because this reason, or you know, you bring up some other things. Oh, it won't fit in my crate, and so oh, <laughs> and, uh, and there's, uh, there's I don't want to ruin it. I don't want to ruin it. There's just so much smart shit. There's there's a, a and on the point. video version, I was pretending like I was physically growing during the show, so I kept like creeping closer to the camera, like oh no. I am growing in my crate. Yeah. I think at one point, at one point, like when it starts, you can't even see JL's head because the camera is only showing the torso. Because he's so big. <laughs> oh man, there's a there's a joke about there's a doo-doo joke in there that's so good. Oh, 
God, man. <laughs> And you're right. Like, and thank you for saying, because I know some people might say like, making fun of the kid. It's like never okay. But right. I'm like, I'm only using this kid who we know nothing about, except that he's right. tall, like as a vehicle to be like, yeah, his dad doesn't do anything with him, which we all know is basically true. Right. And like his mom is like, not a good parent. Like she's right. involved, but not a good parent just because exactly. of her. And so yeah. it's really, like you said, like a reflection on on them. And it's there's like smart. a little bit of weird Elon Musk that I've kind of put in. Like he's always saying like dude and bro now. And I think that's yeah, like yeah. Elon Musk <laughs> like seeping in. Yeah. But, oh, I'm glad. Yeah, I took that as just like, that's how kids talk these days too. And so he still would have some of that, you know, but right. man, it's so fucking funny. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, it, like it, to me, that is what separates you from the, you know, the vast, amount of just like people that do like Trump or political humor right. or, you know, the clap their humor and shit. That, that to me is why, uh, you the goat, bro. You're one of my faves. So, uh, all right. Uh, make sure y'all check that out. Like I said, have blackface, man. We got it pre-ordered. Go get it wherever you pay for comedy. Okay. You, and you go. can rent it. A lot of the sites allow you to rent it if you don't want to buy yeah. it, obviously, but I think you want to buy it. I think it's just, it's, I think, for most people, I think, you know, don't think of it as like, oh, JL, that like independent, struggling, depressed right. dude that we support. Like, I'm willing to put the album and the special against anybody. And I mean, also, that. Like, also, whoever like, you want. It sucks when you rent something and then you go, fuck, I should have bought this. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I should have spent yeah. the four more dollars. I would now just be able to watch it anytime. But because I, you know, went with the four dollar version or whatever the fuck, now I gotta I gotta watch it within forty eight hours and never see the shit again unless I want to pay for it again. Right. So I'd say y'all buy it. That's what I do. All right, y'all. That's it. Thanks for listening. Uh, we'll Thank probably you, have another episode this week at some point. Thank you. Um, uh, we'll see how many episodes we do. It's really it's holiday season. It's just whatever we feel like doing. Um. So all right, that's it. Thanks for listening. We'll be back until next time. I love you. I love you too. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye, Bye JL. JL.